<laughs> yeah. So like the first one, I was like, okay, well, I'll just uh, you know, I'll just clip to that part and then continue. And then <laughs> I was like, well, never mind, bro. <laughs> Damn. Dude. Nah, you're good. You're good. I'm not trying to be no, devious. You know we I was just it, trying though. to be. I was trying to be naturally, you know, ride sliding into a conversation. But yeah, As if so. we don't already have that. I know, dude. I know. Well, yeah. then I'll just hit the. I'll just hit the pen. The a pen. Little. The 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 Penske. Have you um? Has anyone? Do you have any? That's like anyone that's. I don't know if you would have anyone that's a Gen Z in your your workplace. No. Well, I mean, you I interact didn't. with some of them because you know with work and you know Paige and et cetera, yeah. et cetera. I, uh, it's pull the pen out. So like, what's um? What's the what's the vape vape pen um? nicknames Pensky. um oh so all the zoomers we don't talk to because they're officers and i don't like officers okay because they're because they're stupid and they're zoomers fair enough fair enough um dude there was like a there was like a there was like a little catchphrase my brother would always call like the pens and stuff and it was like uh damn dude oh it's all right I, i'll i'll it would just literally i would just literally waste time trying to remember what they're called pen something it'll come back to me and I'll just reference it to you. I'll just say it to you or I'll just make it the, I'll make it like a, my Tarkov name or something, something along those lines. Yeah. But anyways, though, so yeah, so um, I'll officially get started here and stop twiddling my thumbs. But uh, yeah, so again, uh, Circle Craft Podcast, joined by my, my mentor, my friend, my liege, Mr. Privateer Group, Derek himself. How are you doing, dude? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm glad to be your felonious North Star. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah dude yeah yeah absolutely a huge inspiration to me but no you know, joking aside um one um always been someone that i've considered probably one of my my top top friends influences and people like i like to reference and network with as well as a great great person um yeah you get kind of a bad a bad coin because you know i guess you just don't put up with you're not as patient with bullshit as as others are but uh i've always had i have a huge respect for you and you're probably one of the most authentic people that i, I still interact with and you know, and you know, even it goes past just face value. So yeah, thank you, sir. Well, thank you. I'm, yeah, it's very, it was kind of you. And, yeah, and you're right. I uh, I just got done with uh, one of those dudes like that, and the old the old customer service emails. So hell yeah, hell yeah, that, yeah. I don't know. Some people I think just get. Uh, I think they still have that Amazon Amazon type wish list type bullshit going on. But uh, but anyways though. But yeah. So um, so you're out of California still and so my natural reaction is always to ask what's the weather like right now oh man it's pretty good it's kind of warm uh it's it's uh it's not unbearably hot with the sun is shining and that's a good day there you go can't complain can't complain in thursday so you're you're inching away to the weekend very close very awesome almost there so um something else that i have started doing again as we've discussed and it was funny dude crazy coincidence is like you had mentioned like hey when we jump back on i really like really like to do like the the like the off the wall questions again and that made me so happy that made me super happy because i was like oh well coincidentally enough i've been brainstorming all week to think of some really good questions because like to me it's like i can't do the same question even though i'll get different answers i want to hit it like you know something a little different but uh yeah so super super hyped up the little icebreakers and everything like that so uh we'll do three questions and um, I have some good ones. See how they go. See, I'm curious to see what your your answer is. But uh, we'll start it off with uh, what's uh, what's the most overrated junk food? And by junk food, I kind of think of like chips, potato chips, and stuff like that. Not just, not like fast food, but like junk food. Overrated junk food. I don't know. Takis. Takis. Yeah. Okay. So, what is with takis? Like, I does anyone actually eat? I've never seen someone physically eat takis. I uh neither have I. Yeah. I only know them from my memes and my dreams. Exactly. And uh I've seen them in like clips of people eating the blue ones, but yeah. eating, you know, a bushel at a time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like something in day Z or something. It's not even real. It's not even a real substance. Yeah. So I thought about this yesterday. Well, Taki specifically. So I was in the grocery store and they're not even on the chip aisle. They're like on like one of like the corridor ends of the aisle. It's like they, it's like yeah. people are almost embarrassed to advertise that they sell Takis. So it's, it's funny. Even at gas stations, they're always like separated. They're like, ex, you know, inclusive. 
Yeah, so. I've seen them, the end caps and the yeah, uh, yeah. the checkout aisles. Exactly, exactly. Weird. I'll have to interview someone who's like a talky lover, you know, just get some Q&As and get some stuff like situated. But yeah, weird. I agree. I don't, it's, you know, super, super interesting. But uh, anyway, so, okay. So uh, question number two. All right. The third one I'm really excited for. So I'm really hyped for oh, that boy. one. But I'm, I'm oh, trying boy. to build, I'm trying I'm to build excited. it up. All right. Uh, I'm going to give you a choice on this because I have two really good ones, I feel. Um, so coin flip. One is heads, one's tails. What, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? Heads or heads. tails? Heads. Heads? Okay. Calling heads. All right. All right. Always heads. Okay. Queen, conveniently enough. Uh, so I have a funny story to attach to this, but what Who? What was the tallest girlfriend you've ever had? And obviously, you're a, you're, a, you're a taken man. So, But growing up or anything like that, what was like the tallest girlfriend? And like, how tall were you? Oh, boy. Um... I gotta think about that. Yeah, it's a fucking crazy question, right? I dated a girl who played volleyball in high school when I was in high school. Yeah, and I thought I think that we saw almost eye to eye. And I'm at that point, I was like six feet mm-hmm. tall, <laughs> or okay. six to one. And um, I don't know that it was even a thing that we thought about. I don't yeah. know that I was like awake enough to be like, oh, yeah. I like I'm short. That question's gonna hit home sometime at some point. I'm gonna ask it again to someone, and it's gonna like be it's just gonna be a straight homer, a grand slam. But so uh, so funny story. Um, this was uh, this was what was this? This was before I met my wife. But I dated this one chick, and um, you know, pretty whatever. But I'm a relatively short fella. I have you know, it doesn't bother me. But she was as well as a volleyball player, and she was easily like six two or six three, and we dated all of a week because like the whatever, like the, the first dance of school, like, cause it was like in like August, whatever, September or whatever for school and stuff. And uh, I remember going and uh, like the, you know, like the, whatever the slow dance. So like, you don't really even slow dance. You're just sitting there just like rocking. And like, dude, I felt so embarrassed being like being towered over. Cause I was like five, seven, five, six at that time, I guess, you know, five, six. And she's like, I mean, dude, like, just just it was just like such an awkward thing and like dude it bothered me so much but she had she didn't care like it didn't even bother like didn't even cross her mind you know and so for some reason i don't know it was just funny but like the more and more i thought about it i just wanted every excuse to get out of that relationship because the fact she was like just would just just tower over me in every circumstance i was like man this is just just too embarrassing i can't do this yeah it was pretty funny i guess it's like a not very good story as, as much as i thought it would be but what do you yeah. mean? It's a great story. I just don't want to interrupt you. No, no, yeah, no. But I was just trying to think. Like, I feel like there was like more to flesh out on it. But I guess, I guess, I couldn't really embellish too much. But yeah, it was just funny because, like, I, uh, I just had a feeling that you know, as as it progressed, you know, like I was doing every like thing possible to think of like a way of getting out of it. Like that's like the only moment that it's like, hey, it's not, it's not you, it's me. It's true. It's it's me. I'm I'm too short, <laughs> you know. But you just one day start. Yeah. What's, what is five seven sh- short? Short. It's a mindset thing. It, I say this I think as a tall was, person. I think it's just. Well, yeah. No, I I agree. I agree. I totally agree. But I think it was just a contrast because she was just like legitimately like six two, like she would like tower over me, like you know, like when like what's the typical slow dance positioning? So like what the girl puts her her arms around your way you. Yeah, the girl puts her arms around your waist and you, no, other way around, other way around. Well, that's yeah, what man. I was doing, though. That's what I was doing, though, you know, because like that's, you know, that's the difference. Like, yeah, you dude. your arm is draped around her neck. Yeah, and she's got her hands yeah, at your waist. Exactly. Like she's I'm, leading. Yeah, I'm having to look up. <laughs> you know, you know I'm, I'm looking up towards the moonlight, dude. It's fucking terrible. You know, Town down at you like yeah. some sort of orc. Yeah, dude. Like, like she captured me. I'm like a I'm like a like, I'm like a fucking mount in a video game you know like <laughs> she's she accomplished so many things like she you know, like she collected so many whatever tulips and like this is her award you, know? you, you guy. guys are leaving the dance and she just <laughs> you just toss her your keys just yeah. instinctively she drives you home like, exactly. wait a second <laughs> yeah. do you want a drink <laughs> yeah. are you hungry have you had enough substance tonight i don't know it's a weird complex and i had to get out so i i was like trying to i think i I broke up with her because like normally circumstance wise, it'd be the opposite way around, you know, but, um, and, and, and to be fair, I mean, she was taller than a lot of pretty much everybody. She I mean, she was like one of the tallest people in her grade to be quite honest for like the age and stuff. But I'm trying to remember, um, 
man, I, I think I tried to like overcomplicate something that she had said or something as like a scapegoat to get out of it instead of just saying like, hey, you're just so much taller than me. It's not going to work. Like, <laughs> it's like a weird thing. But <laughs> it was weird. anyway. Yeah. I mean, when you're young, you just say stupid shit. But all right. So off to the last question. I'm, I'm pretty hyped for this, dude. I'm kind of curious to see what you'll say. All right. So hypothetically speaking, we're in the future. You have passed away. What food would you want served at your funeral? I would want. Uh, if he if he's still alive too, I would want my buddy Matt to come and cook smash burgers at smash the, burgers. like live. There you go at the funeral or yeah. at the, the the after service. You know that was something that uh, now you bring that up. I didn't really understand. So my uh, my grandparents are from the south. I don't is the Texas really? the south. I don't I don't know. Yeah, if it's it's Selfish. it's South Texas. And when my grandmother passed, I remember that it was a very big deal that people all of her friends when they showed up, everybody brought KFC. What? And cool. as a child, I didn't. I'm like, shouldn't this be fancy? Like, shouldn't someone <laughs> yeah. make something? Like, why are people okay and happy with KFC? And it just, it's just what they like. It's yeah, that you know. And hey, you want I some comfort remember. food, dude? Some comfort yeah, food, sure. Times of grief. But to say, like, um, I can't remember where. I don't know how exactly I thought of the question, but I popped up because I. It's been a joke that I've said, like, you know. Oh, you know, when I pass away, I want like there be a like nice hot steaming cheese sticks, like good cheese sticks, you know, just pass oh, one around, you know, take one off the edge, you know, like, you know, just have one of those bad boys. But yeah, I mean, like, I don't want it like right as I'm being like lowered, like you're lowering me into soil or whatever, you know, whatever. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm fucking uh, just well, being no, burned. Like, what if what if as you're being lowered or like people come to pay their respects to like it's going to be an open casket because yeah. you're a handsome guy. I don't <laughs> think that would ever happen to you. Uh, Maybe. you know like as they as they give communion like he just has the cheesesteak and you walk up you take a little bite and you just kind of look down at, at Max's dead body you, and you you know you just go on your way and then the next person comes yeah. up and they get a little bite of that cheesesteak yeah yeah, maybe so dude yeah and then just like they brush the crumbs off with their hands on top of the like on the on the open casket like that's oh, like yeah. their way of like paying like you know tribute not tribute but like you know like condolences or whatever like oh you know get the crumbs off your fingers on my, on my jacket or whatever <laughs> give the casket I mean, bugs something yeah, to eat. dude yeah give me a little something it's like it's like putting the coins in your eyes but you're just putting a little little dab right in my mouth yeah <laughs> send your ass over that river <laughs> with, the, with, with little with, nibbles with a, dude little snack the, where the dog judges the weight of your heart <laughs> yeah. just snacking on those things yeah <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm just trying to imagine. Like, I guess I just picture that. Like, I, uh, I can, I can visualize something just absolutely absurd like that, like going on. And it's, you know, it's just such an unrealistic thing that would ever happen. You know, obviously people are gonna be. Well, I say that. I say that people will be upset. <laughs> Maybe people are like, thank fucking God he's gone over. Here's a cheese stick for you, dude. But yeah, throw one in my throw one in my mouth before you close that bad boy. Can man. I get one to go? Yeah, exactly. Is it okay? Is anyone gonna eat these? We'll take them. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So, anyways, though. So, okay. So besides the cheese stick. So for those of you who don't know who, who Privateer Group is or, or Derek and stuff like that, um, I don't know how you don't know. You've you've been like part of one of the pivotal like top key guys who've been around for quite some time i think uh tell everyone about privateer group real quick well synopsis oh man i don't know i just come up with a patch idea that i like and yeah. then i sell it and people buy it and i'm yeah. extremely grateful for that but uh i started it seeing a, a kid a long time ago on a facebook group for morale patches he was living in like southeast asia and he would uh make these little limited run patches and i thought really? that was pretty neat yeah so when i was running um that's when I kind of decided to sell them. Yeah. I was running them myself. I just made a couple and then gave them out to buddies um, to put on my own gear because mm -hmm. it felt it felt cool, yeah, man. man. You see all the dudes in the pictures with the patches. But, uh, I, you know, I really wouldn't know what to how to describe this thing. It, it's kind of taken off on its own. Yeah, it's definitely, excuse me. It's Yeah, it's definitely taken a, a thing of its own because, like, even, like, recently... Oh man, sorry, indigestion. That's the maybe that's the precursor, dude. Maybe those cheese stick that that round of cheese sticks is going to be coming faster than I'm expecting. Uh, Penske. That's no, that wasn't it. I was trying to think of the vape pen thing. I thought I hit it and then I it blanked out. But um, but yeah. So um, but you've you've really died, kind of like diversified and been able to make some really cool alternating you know things. So you kind of keep it kind of fresh and stuff. Where you're not just doing the same thing over and over again. And of course, different colorways and stuff. And then doing some. Some things for like different services so they can still utilize and wear your stuff, which I think is cool. Like I, 
I like that. I think that's a cool, cool method of doing stuff. But uh, how has that, how has that process been in general? Like being able to keep something coming and going, but also, you know, keeping like the roots down and like reoccurring product and stuff, you know, obviously, you know, growth. That makes sense. I mean, um, it's pretty difficult for me. I'm not a real creative type. Yeah. I, ha I have to take my shitty rough concepts to like someone artsy like you who can flesh it out. Um, like the one, you know, the, the one sketch you did for me that we'll, uh, we'll show people later. Mm -hmm. Um, the mag bags are fun. I, I want to make stuff that people can use and it's not just a patch. Mm -hmm. It's not just changing the colorway. Um, some people like that. And I, I try to, to cater to them here and there and make stuff like that where, Hey, make a green one with the black guy on it. You know, the black skeleton, mm -hmm. make a, make a red one with a, a green skeleton on it. Like it's a little too Christmassy, but we'll see. Um, recently we did the cufflinks and uh, people have figured it out by now like dude gold foil wrapped chocolate coins it's just fun yeah um, yeah the the cufflinks was really cool like i don't think i don't think anyone's done that so you say you're not really creative but i still think that's a sense of creativity to like knowing what you want you just know how to you know how to like i mean even then you kind of do know what you want you know you i think you kind of you are creative you just it's just like one of those like avenues or skill sets that, you know, obviously w would require whatever amount of time to invest in to get better at or learn. And then it's like, well, for you, you know, it, you have the, uh, fortunately the resources to, to kind of have someone flesh out whatever your vision is. Yeah, I'm real lucky to to know a couple creative guys. And I'm, I'm the thing is, I'm just only smart enough to bring the idea to guys like you to uh, to make it happen. Hey, well, uh, hey, man, that that within itself, I mean, this says you have creativity, you know, it's just a different level. But uh, but that's really cool, though. I mean, I, I just I don't know. That's like another level of level of what, that I just appreciate. And like, it's, I'm impressed by because you have been able to adapt and find ways to keep making stuff that's cool and then making things that people want or, or you know, even at growth and stuff to keep people kind of coming back, you know? So it's, it's cool that you're able to kind of make alternating products for people who are, you know, either new customers or older. Cause you still release stuff that's like still the same style way and everything like that for people who have missed out. So yeah, man, you're, you're a pretty, you're, you're definitely on the better, the, the better side of things. Thanks, man. I try to, uh, I try my best to make people yeah. happy. Um, like you said, I ever once in a while do the original colorway stuff when mm -hmm. people, um, missing out i think that like the every time i tell myself that like everyone has already bought the black shirt with like the white skeleton yeah. and the uh the red you know there's no more to sell like more people buy them and i'm extremely grateful for that um i try to i say um too much man you gotta edit all no. these out. <laughs> no, like no, Obama up here uh <laughs> can i get a um a motherfucking cheeseburger um uh, randy uh. yeah but no but still like i think that within itself is still you know there's, it's definitely something you could do like once a year and you know like you would have people flock to it and you could have it where it's super restrictive or whatever but you still do stuff at a at a manner where people can still get a hold of your stuff you know get a hold of something that you make or selling so i don't know that's i think that's really cool it's an admirable thing but um but yeah so that's really cool but um what's been the what's been like the most what's been the most fun part of privateer group because like i guess when i think of it i don't for some reason i just immediately think um darcy and i was talking that talking about it not long ago i was talking with someone about darcy and stuff so i know that you had a really cool experience going and i know that that you know i would think that privateer group kind of like help, helped you know make that a, a possible situation you know like what's uh what's some what's like one of the fun things what's one of the best things that you've been able to to do or like be able to be a part of with privateer uh darcy's a big one yeah. shooting with uh, dawn of green line tactical opportunities mm -hmm. like that where um networking mm -hmm. meeting a lot of people through through pg and even before that has been a huge a huge thing and i'm grateful to all of all of my friends and anyone who's made any of that possible like with go going to the direct action resource center man that was just Corey of subdef that dude knew that i've always wanted to go it uh, it can be difficult to get in depending on you know mm -hmm. uh your the coursework like usually i think they have a civilians can take like a pistol class or tusk mm -hmm. and tusk dm uh, NVUC, the night vision um, users course, is a new one that's open enrollment. But most of them, I believe, and I'm sure that I'll get corrected. I don't want to get in trouble with Rich. Nah, you're good. Uh, they're, they're mostly law enforcement, uh, federal stuff, uh, cool guy military thing, and, and for good reason. Right. So I was talking about Darcy 15, 20 years ago with um, with buddies and Corey knew. And uh, when he had the opportunity to go, he he got me in. So I'm extremely grateful for that. And, you know, private tour group was able to pay for it. And I'm extremely grateful to the customers. Yeah. Um, 
you know, who essentially paid for it. And now I've got a couple stickers over there and it's fun. I'm, I'm going yeah, back in cool. September for, uh, for Tusk. Real excited nice. about that. Nice. So what's the difference between, and, um, you know, maybe you don't know everything just, you know, fleshed out in terms of what you're going to be expecting or, you know, what you'll be doing there. Cause I'm sure it's one of those things that, you know, obviously adapts or changes or alters to whatever ongoing situations and stuff. But like, what's the difference between like Darcy and like Tusk, for instance? Well, well, Tusk is the, uh, is just the coursework they have. That's the, um, mm -hmm. Oh man, tactical urban sustainment course. Uh, it's not my stuff to teach or regurgitate, really, but it's basically, yeah, uh, you know, lo locating and being safe about uh, obtaining water, disaster gotcha. relief okay. things. What to expect because these guys have seen seen a lot of it, if not seen all of it. What to expect when like the grid goes down. What to expect when uh, cool. you know there's no running water on your block and the the new the newborn father with a kid uh, down the street runs out of water and he knocks on your door. Yeah. You know, yeah. How how do you handle all that stuff? I, I believe that there was actually a tornado during one of the Tusk classes earlier oh, in the shit. year. So they those guys were actively you know learning as as that kind of thing was unfolding. I know that like um, I believe it, like Chris Woomer of Avail Solutions uh, was out doing um, disaster relief and helping out in some areas uh, during the tornado and, and things like that. So. Uh, Turning into pretty into applicable. a force multiplier, yeah, yeah. pretty Taking, applicable stuff. Like, I mean, um, there's no real places around where I live because I'm I'm surrounded by salt water here on mm -hmm. Coronado, so I don't know what I'm going to learn, but I'm going to ask a lot of questions about like, hey, you know, I don't have the woods to bug out in. What should I? What, what do you think yeah. I should do? So I'm real interested in that. Yeah, um, that's that'll be interesting too because like you know, in terms of like different parts of the world and different areas, how how rural you live and how far away a rural area would be versus someone, you know, who's like in a really, you know, compact, what's the, what's the, what be the correct word? Uh, uh, like, like, you know, compact city, you know, et cetera, et cetera, you know, populated area, I guess is a better word. But yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm in a real urban, tightly packed urban area, mm -hmm. urban residential area. And then down South of me, the strand is, uh, again, tightly packed residential. And if I get over the bridge, then it's, you know, your city metropolis type of thing going on. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, it, regardless, I mean, that's I think that's something like people talk about skills or things that you should be focusing on instead of whatever, blah, blah, blah to buy or whatever. But I think that's something that's actually like it's very knowledgeable information, because I think, you know, when you're in a grand stand of like panic or great state of panic, you know, you know, I think everything gets very chaotic and then it becomes a uh, you versus everyone else or I guess you and your who you care for versus everyone else's, you know they care for and stuff like that like the you know resources wise and trying to figure out what the best course of actions to to keep everyone alive or safe or healthy and stuff so you know things change so rapidly you just never know especially in terms of like you know like natural disasters i mean because i mean do you guess do you get do you get do you get our earthquakes pretty often i mean i mean california does obviously but like do you you know get them pretty often yourself like in your area um, you know, we get them all the time, but they're so small yeah. and frequent that I don't right. really ever notice them. I haven't felt the the house shake in, in years. Yeah, funny enough, there's actually a lot of earthquakes in South Carolina. And many people don't realize, it, but we're actually close to a very big fault line. But yeah, occasionally you'll, you know, you'll feel something kind of odd or something like that, like a like an aircraft carrier or whatever, and like a little rumble or maybe one thing will fall over or you just feel like a shift. And no one even realizes like, you know, a, a, either a high grade or whatever type of earthquake just went off but yeah it's pretty crazy yeah but you never know you know things change very dramatically so yeah so um in terms of that when you do that like you know what all what, what all are you taking or like you know you're just taking a like firearm kit and gear and stuff like that and just you have to be like your standard stuff so there is a, a packing list and it's like a suggested packing list and mm -hmm. i've been going over it uh really really getting autistic over it making sure i'm not bringing too much uh because i'll be you know flying across the country and I don't want to bring anything that I don't have right. to bring. And I, from what I understand, you carry around all your stuff all the time. That's pretty cool. So it would behoove you to not bring a lot of stuff. So I went from, you know, I'm bringing like some ultralight uh, gear, but mostly it's just uh, my weapon, um, 10 magazines, no sleep system, maybe a bug net because uh, we're going mm -hmm. in September. Be a little warmer out there. Just want to avoid the ticks. Yeah, <laughs> ticks. Uh small backpack and some just some web gear yeah. uh, weapons maintenance cleaning kit and uh some food yeah very cool don't very know cool. what i'm going to do for food but it's going to be for a couple days couple nights should, mm -hmm. should be a good time yeah there we go there we go all right so and uh, so in terms of that so like um so we'll talk about um like firearm stuff too because i mean dude i i probably should go listen i should have listened to our original podcast 
just to kind of get a feel for it. But I'm almost embarrassed by it because it was so long ago too. So I'm not even sure what all we discussed specifically. But uh, in terms of like, you know, back then, because that's actually, that was actually a while back. That was pretty long ago. But um, what um, firearm wise, uh, like, you know, gun, ro- gun wise, are you still rocking something very similar or have you like changed up your kit, your setup? Like, you know, what all has changed on that aspect? So I'm still rocking the CQB Mod 2. It's an 11 and a half inch uh, Knight's Upper mm-hmm. with a, a privateer armament lower. Um, the the way that I index the weapon here and there, like kind of present it, has changed a little over the years. So the yeah. grips come and go. But the most recent uh, change I made was using an RSR, uh, a Raidworks RSR. It's like a super tall, mm-hmm. just a Picatinny mount. And I believe they were the first dudes on the market to make a tall one uh, of that height. Yeah. Uh, I don't recall what the actual height it brings the EOTech up to, but it's pretty tall enough to put a CR123 Alpha in storage in there. And I dig that. Dude, it's got a plug that has like the the hex key on the interior so you can like tighten the optic down or do other stuff. It's kind of neat. Mm-hmm. It's uh, feature rich. Um, it's, this sounds like an advertisement. I just get really excited about it. Yeah, gear. yeah. It's got a. Uh, it's feature rich compared to like, you know, other just risers for about the same price. I want to say it's really competitive in price. Yeah. Raise the tech right. up. I like that a lot more for shooting passively through night vision. And then uh, I grabbed a mall a while back and boy, do I like that thing. Yeah. The mall's cool, man, dude. I will tell you right now that if there's one thing that I regret selling, which granted when I sold it, I was under the impression I was getting another one. Um, but that being said, I, I miss my mall like no like nobody's business i just they're fantastic dude i love it i loved it um do you have a, you have the c1 stuff a c1 or, or were you able to get a malda i would like a da but there's really yeah a, outside of you know camping it's, with it there's, i really have no use for it yeah it's the, the, the mall c1 is actually like it performs so much better than even than like a full power pack like it's almost kind of crazy, but yeah, it's dude. Oh man, make me jealous. Make making me really want one. Have you um have you have you messed with any of the other new quote unquote modern lasers yet? Like raids or or the Engals at all? I've used the earlier raids. Um, didn't like it as much as I thought I was gonna like it. I was mm-hmm. the, the the center uh diode for the laser was really um Off-putting. appealing to me. Yeah. No, I, I like oh, it really? because it's okay. it's yeah it's a little not closer to the bore, but. If you're shooting the weapon vertically, maybe it makes yeah. more sense instead of it being off center. But if it's if the lasers I'm already shooting are off center, I have no problem. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, I shoot a converging dot or a, yeah, a converging zero. Um, but I've used the end gal. That thing was really neat. But me as a user, I need more practice with it. I was unable to. I was. I found myself like feeling around, even though I knew where it was. Mm-hmm. The activation switch. It always felt like it was just a little further than I thought it yeah. was. And um, during some some shooting stuff with it, I, I found myself paying attention to where my thumb was and not what the target was, you know, where the yeah. target was. Yeah, getting just dis- dis- distracted from something. Yeah. But yeah, the mall, dude, it's it's just one. It's just so convenient. It's so it's such a natural feeling system, too. And then like in the grand scheme of things, you know, the the mall like on a quote unquote civilian level or model performs again so well. It's just such a sophisticated piece of a uh, piece of equipment i know i kind of miss mine might be that might be something down the line to go in get get another what did you one. replace it with what, what what what's taking its place now um so so te- so technically um the whole situation with that was um at the time i was under the impression i was getting a brand new one as well as an ingal and a raid so i thought that the the, the mall was literally about to be arriving within two weeks so i was like okay i'm gonna go ahead and sell my c1 and i had a tundra mall at a mall a tundra mall so i Got a nice, got a nice little money for that, and then, you know, I just put that basically as a recoup from money I'd spent on the new one, um, and lo and behold, it just fell through. Like I don't know what the deal was or what happened exactly, but I was supposed to get a replacement version of all three lasers, and basically whatever ones I did or didn't like, I was just going to go ahead and like resell or you know just get my money back for them and stuff like that. And I was going to you know and then just kind of go from there, but. It, I didn't get a single one of them. So I'm still rocking. I replaced it for a temporary full power pack. And so I'll probably end up just getting them all, to be honest with you. The the new EOTech laser looks pretty meh. It just feels very underwhelming, to be honest. What is a Tundra Mall? Uh, that was like a limited, like a very limited run of malls that were clear anodized versus the tan or the green or the uh, or just a standard black. 
But yeah, they had like a small run of tundras where they were just all clear anodizing instead of the whatever other colorways and stuff. That's it. That's just a colorway. That's it. I got to look that up. I had no idea. Yeah. Dude, I had never heard of it either. And then like I found out, yeah, it was was really cool. So I kind of had like a really rare one. I had a low serial number one and I should have... Dude, again, it's like one of those things I get caught up in the moment of having something new or whatever and I just... You make a stupid... You make a dumb, dumb mistake. That was a dumb, dumb mistake. I should have kept it. So, yeah. Unfortunate, but... It's one of those things. So, but, uh, but yeah, so I'll end up getting another one though. Yeah. Cause the mall is, is it's, it's just a, such a solid little system. Yeah. Dude, this, the splash feature, that flood is, yeah. I, I, that's exactly why I, I bought it. And, yeah. uh, it does not, uh, does disappoint. Does not disappoint. Yeah. Oh. Everything kind of pre-configured for you. So you don't have to sit there and tinker with that either is, is also really nice in terms of like, you know, setting up your, your IR illuminator and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, so man, 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 but, uh, but yeah, so anyways, oh, uh, moving forward, so like you know, with with privateer and you well, obviously opening up different ca- categories and stuff like that, how how has it been to basically like maybe like be mindful of not getting too far ahead of yourself in terms of some stuff and work wise? Because you know, obviously, you know, I guess sometimes I get really excited and stuff, and then you still have an, another job that you do that's um, not attached to that, you know. But I mean, it's funny enough because I mean, I think most people would think that that privateer is a almost a full time job, but you know. Luckily, it's it's an accommodation to a cool job that you have that you know we won't disclose. But, but yeah. Um, you know that's a great question. Uh, I, I a lot of people have a lot of assumptions about privateer group. Mm-hmm. I get a random DM like, "Hey, I know all about you, and just want to say thank you." And I'll respond back with like, "I don't know who told you what, but you're welcome. <laughs> uh, keep on fucking rocking, bud." Yeah. Or, uh, you know, people think like a dude hit me up is like, hey, were you in Silver Squadron? Hey, I don't know what gave you the Im- image that I was like dev grew. That's flattering. Not me, man. <laughs> like whoever told you that's lying or, yeah. you know, any any other thing like that. I'm not into that. The weird stolen valor. It's not me. Yeah, that's uh, I don't I mean, there's barely anybody in the in on the Instagram that I've taken pictures. You know, there's pictures of in yeah. the military. Yeah. Um, well, and that's funny, too, because like I would have never never gotten that thought or opinion i've never i never have like i mean i didn't know what your background was for you know for a while until we became became better friends but mm-hmm. um i you know it's just it's never i never got that personification but i think sometimes people do that just to you know just to just to dig or like you know trying to get something out or you know to fish a little bit but uh but yeah has i mean how much i would say let's see here I'm trying to, dude i'm trying to remember when we did our first podcast but how much how much have you grown page wise from like a year ago, say, give or take. I think about 10 to 15 ish thousand followers. I'm about to hit 40, 40 K. And I've awesome. been sitting at 30 for a while. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I hope it I, I hope that brings more sales. Yeah. Uh there's really no way for me to measure it. Uh I about the same people every time um grab the same stuff. Not the same stuff, but you know, but make, make around the same things every year. You got mm-hmm. to edit the fuck out of this one this part, dude. <laughs> You're good, dude. Dude, write the timestamp yeah. down man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, no, but but no, no, I know what you mean though, but like uh that's always and that that within itself is always super flattering when you're able to do that and like you have that coming up and like you have a fan base that is like, you know, obviously they have no reason to continue buying the same thing they've already always bought, but you know, super cool. Have have you been able to build I don't want to say relationships, but like any type of like cool friend type or not. I think I think you have to limit those type of relationships, and that's probably a good question to ask you. But like, how do you cap yourself with not maybe overextending to a customer? Does that make sense? Uh, so that's that's a great question because a lot of people are. I'm friendly with a lot of people, yeah, and I I, I think that a lot of people think we're closer friends than we are because I have to. I try to give everybody my time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot for forty though, forty k. Yeah. Even if it's a fraction of that, it's still a lot, you know, so. Most people, you can you can sniff out pretty pretty quickly yeah. when they're trying to, I hate to use the term like, you know, clout chasing. Yeah. Because uh, I'm not anyone big or famous, uh, but they're some, usually trying to get to other people that I know. Um, Most people don't have to fake it, though. If they're just being genuine dudes, I'll talk to them. And some, some people have made that jump over into friend. And those people are typically not asking for anything. Their Their hands aren't held out. They're just they just talk to you because they know that I'm a regular person if mm-hmm. I'm talking off the street. Yeah, it's it's funny how that works too. Like, um, I, I guess I just don't understand. I guess maybe it's just people's perception of things or like how they've grown up or something. Kind of like, 
clouds that type of judgment of like how to like interact with others and stuff like that or or how to perceive you know like a friendship or whatever or like or like i'm trying to get, trying to get something out of something you know it's just funny but yeah it's um yeah people are people are very interesting creatures very interesting creatures how people like interact. i think a, a big thing with it too is that there's a huge generational and cultural difference between mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm in my thirties and a lot of these guys are in their early twenties, sometimes mm-hmm. late teens. And I think that that's, they're communicating digitally is all they've ever known. Yeah. Whereas you and I grew up where we're talking face to face, but there's a phone call involved maybe. And then we are face to face when we hang out. Right. And it's, it's, it's a, I try to build a friendship or a relationship, um, with a person in person. Yeah. Not that, you know, the online thing can't work. It's just a little easier when I can hear the tone and right. see your eyes. Yeah, and fleshed out, like, you know, authentic um, authentic type, you know, reactions and, and, you know, just posture and expression. Yeah, and I think you're right, too. Like, you know, I think that's something like even like just having a, a just a, a normal conversation, even though as we record this digitally via via Discord, you know. But, uh, but I think that still, like, I think being able to personify stuff, you know, being able to hit tones and like, you know, expressions and stuff, you know, and people kind of... I think a lot of people really need to take like some fucking speech classes or speech or interpersonal communication classes. And I kind of realized I, I took a lot more communication classes than I remembered, you know, in college. But I, it, it definitely helped me compared to, you know, prior where I was definitely kind of it's actually kind of shy for a while. It's kind of difficult for me to like have communication with people I wasn't really familiar with or knew, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but how yeah. Tom, I just don't know what to say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think, and I think that's something else too. Like, I think sometimes people are expecting an answer; they're expecting something from you, like a res- like a specific type of response. And then, like you know, when they don't receive it, they kind of you know react differently or poorly or something. You know. Yeah, I've had a, I've had a couple of those, but at that point, I just you're gone, you're yeah. done, dude. I don't. Yeah. Too weird for me. I I really am just a regular guy. Yeah. And uh, talk about the the numbers on the follower count. Or uh, who who somebody follows on Instagram, you know, people hit me up asking me questions about so and so or such and such. And hey, just because I follow this account doesn't mean we're friends. Doesn't mean I know anybody. A mm-hmm. uh, lot of lot of weird clout chasing uh, going on. Yeah, I get that. I get that some too. And obviously not, but not to the extent of of what you see. But I do get to see some of that too, especially interaction with other people. But very very interesting, very interesting. But so so outside of privateer group, you know, obviously, you know, you and I actually played. Um, you know, trying to get away from the the boring por- portions of like business and work wise and stuff like that. So oh, none of it's boring when I'm talking to you about it, man. Oh, oh, make, make me blush, bro. You make me blush. You blush all day long. Oh, damn, boy. <laughs> Hell yeah. But um, I think one of the things I've I've always enjoyed about you is just how authentic and how naturally you come off uh, character wise and stuff like that. And we can be talking or discussing anything. It doesn't have to be in terms of work or business or or social media or you know you know, I want to say whatever the, whatever, like the industry stuff like that, but uh, it's even just normal stuff, you know, more normal discussion and stuff like that and banter and stuff. Like even like for a while we were sending each other just, uh, whenever like one meme trend back and forth and do that. Was, like, probably, oh yeah. I know. I know. It's dude, what you're talking yeah. About. <laughs> that was like probably one of my fam- favorite moments. And like, you know, it was just like whoever was, you know, whenever we would find a different variation of it, we would just send it to each other. And like that to me, is just such a perfect, version of a, a, just a very nice simple you know simplifying version of communication between two friends where we're not expecting anything else not expecting extra just a simple interaction that would maybe change someone's day you know dude it, 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 dude, it just makes such a difference because it's such a such a dude it's such a fun thing you know it's like okay i'm stopping what i'm doing to screenshot this and then forward this to to derek just because i know he'll fucking get a kick out of it dude uh, yeah like you said it's, awesome. it's a real it's real quick way is letting someone know you're thinking about them like yeah. you don't it doesn't have to be a full-blown conversation just like sure. uh, oh so and so would like this or this is the same humor that we've seen yeah. together <laughs> let's take the risk and send him this meme and yeah we'll see what we'll see what happens yeah dude that was one of my favorite dude that was so funny they they've kind of like they've kind of like faded they're past their prime but I haven't seen any really good new ones, but dude, there were some, Either, there yeah, were some, yeah, there were some hot ones and we'll have to figure out the next trend so we can continue to do that. Continue something like that. I got, I got a couple I've been saving to send you. Oh, hell yeah. Dude, I, I, got, I got a couple, man. I got a couple. So, <laughs> oh, I better say, well, but you know, like in terms of that though, like, you know, for someone who, you know, is just a normal dude, you do, you do a really good job in, in terms of networking or relating because I mean, for me, I find memes like that because my, my younger brother, you know, is, is definitely of the Gen Z, you know, et cetera, et cetera. 
home soon. Let's check this one out. But so I'm able to relate, and that's kept me like in the loop on some stuff. But yeah, you're. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, these are like just the deep fries. Just, but it's like a, a crazy. <laughs> so oh oh so okay so speaking of really good memes, um, I was snap because I have you on Snapchat, right? Snapchat is like. Yeah. People have people have like talked to me like oh it's like, it's like, and like no 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 it's not Circlecraft related. I have some people who follow me from Circlecraft, but it's definitely more personal, like funny, like it's just not serious, it's not brand or anything like that. But it's like one of my favorite ways of communicating because it's just it's like the similar type mantra. But uh, our our good boy Kyle he sent this to me earlier, and I think you'll find a, I think you'll find it quite quite funny. But, oh um, boy, look at that! Yeah, what a handsome man! What a handsome boy! <laughs> He's all wide. That's the widest dude I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> dude, it's fucking gr- he's super oily. <laughs> but, Good for uh, him getting his beret. Yeah, right, right, right. But uh, tan beret. Yeah. I don't want anyone listening to think uh, we're yeah. misrepresenting him. Right, right, right. But um, uh, but yeah, that's pretty funny. But yeah, he just sent that to me earlier. Fucking these new things. But yeah, so um, so again, so like back and back and back to that um being able to kind of steer away from guns and stuff but that's been like one of my favorite things in terms of uh communication friendship was like specific with you like i feel like we're we're able to really kind of have that type of relationship without being always business or work related so like you know playing games and stuff so um so obviously we have to talk about pc a little bit so like what games have uh what games have you been playing as of late uh, when I had some free time recently, I've been playing or I played this uh, Vampire Survivors, and it's basically a game where you hmm. take um, you take a number and you make the number bigger so you can kill more enemies to get the stuff to attack faster. It is the dumbest uh, mind numbing game I've ever played, but it's the point where you you fire the thing up and you kill everything on the screen immediately. It's it's a weird one. Um, survivor game, I think it's called. It's like a new genre playing a lot of Slay the Spire. Like the last time I talked to you, yeah. I want to say it's like a roguelite or yeah, hard yeah, yeah. game thing. You just draw a card. It's like better than Magic the Gathering. Oh, man, dudes are going to be so bummed out when they hear us talking about playing a card games. Talk I off. like the Magic the Talk Gathering. Talk off when I have the time. Yeah. Yeah, I think was, we were talking about it this this just recently about trying to get back into and play. And I, um, Oh, that reminds me. I need to send you some codes that um, someone found. Do, have you seen those? Those codes? I have. You have? Okay, you got them all? There's like five of them? Mm-hmm. okay cool 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 but yeah if you're on the discord you'll see them but otherwise you know whatever but uh but yeah so i would say like i saw that they're doing that and i wonder if there's a reason why or extension or if it's just like getting close to the reset period but it's definitely time to start maybe possibly playing again just oh for yeah the, the wipe is coming for sure yeah and um where we're going we don't need those codes man yeah <laughs> that's exactly right but you did get a free slick though so i'll say that like that's probably the big thing like i got another you know another free slick but you know what's one slick for another you know slick but um are you so poor you ain't got slicks on uh, stacked up dude i have a i have a couple how much how much money do you have in tarkov right now uh i think like maybe 27 million i know that's okay. probably peas compared to some of these guys yeah i'm gonna say i'm 15 15 million level 45 so i know i was doing that for a while but i have like dude uh they they updated bitcoin which i thought was super interesting so now bitcoin actually sells for profit now so I think last time I looked, it was selling for like 410, 410,000. So I was like, damn, I'm, I'm about to offload all the fucking Bitcoin. But uh, but yeah, but um, dude, uh, you were kind of like, you were kind of like talking poorly about Battle Bits, dude. So I, I won't talk too much about Battle Bits. I talked a little oh, bit about- Oh, you mean Baby Game? I mean, like, you like can call baby, it that. Baby game? You can call it that, dude, if you want. You can call it that if you want, but it's pretty good. It's a pretty good game. It's just, it's just a Battlefield light. It's just Roblox with Battlefield. I, oh, I get that. It's just yeah. easy to make fun of dorks like, oh, yeah. like my buddy Nick yeah, who plays yeah. a lot of that. It's just a fun game, man. Yeah. You're playing baby. <laughs> I think that's what Go every play Battle Fortnite. Bits player that's what every Battle Bits player says. It's a fun game, dude. It's true. Yeah, almost, I say the same thing, dude. <laughs> I, can't, I can't look at that game without thinking there's a, uh, a some squeaker kid playing another game that looks like that, like Roblox or something. Yeah. And it's reenacting like some guy getting out of a truck with a rifle. He's like, sir, get in the car, sir. And his, his fucking voice cracks. Have you seen that? No, dude. It's fucking terrible. But that's every time that we see Battle Bit, that's what I picture. Just like <laughs> nine-year-old kids just screaming. Oh, my God. Headshotting you because they got them young man eyes, you know? Yeah, those those fast, yeah dude. The hand-eye shit. Oof. Do you I wear, can't compete with that. Do you wear glasses? Do you wear glasses when you game? 
No, I'm not weird. That's fucking weird. I, what the what the fuck? Man? I take my eye deterioration with like the rest of them. Okay, I mean? okay. What about what about like the blue light glasses? Are you a blue light glasses guy? No. No, I'm not. I, okay. I, I, you know what? Well, I'm not gonna be telling. I'm not gonna tell anybody now that I wear blue glasses. If you're a hey man, you're a pretty fit guy, but I, I see a lot of these like blue light wearing guy or blue glasses dudes, and like, hey, there's so many other things you can do to improve the quality of your life, like losing weight or eating better. <laughs> and these guys are out there like, hey man, buy these glasses and shut up, get off your phone, get off your phone, go touch grass. Go throw a football with your buddy or something. Go chase a dog. I think I look handsome with my glasses on. I bet you. I bet you look like Neo. I bet you Morpheus do, looking. <laughs> yeah, look, I look super. Well, there's like one other guy that like I know. The only reason I'll wear them is because I would get migraines from from basically looking in front of a screen constantly, like between like iPad and then MacBook. And then I was like, man, I'm getting a kind of like headache, you know, whatever. And then I realized it's just from that. But I generally forget to wear them anyways because they just get in the fucking way. But um, our ancestors looking down yeah, at us, just shaking his fucking head, yeah. wearing protectively. Yeah. yeah, no thanks. Well, there was like a there was like a funny video recently. I think it was like a joke video, but it was also and it was like it was like this woman. This woman was being recorded, and she was like, oh my god, like like men used to go to fucking war and want to go to war to kill fucking people. And now they're like all they want to do is go on side, go, go and play fucking Fortnite or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, it's kind of true. Like, damn, I need, I still have yet to see the gritty available. But, uh, but anyways, though, some, someone will find that joke funny, but, um, but yeah, yeah, it's just kind of interesting to kind of things have simplified. So that's a, that's a good, that's a good topic in terms of, of like discussion, which, you know, I think it kind of comes back to the whole thing about the, the Tusk, the Tusk class. Cause because you, you you're going to be obtaining skills in, you know, in person and stuff like that, that can possibly help you survive in in case of an emergency and type stuff like that. But what are your thoughts? Do you, do you see that a lot? Or do you, do you think people get a little too wrapped up digitally, especially in terms of like social media versus reality and aspect and, and going outside? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. The, the, uh, I think that there's, well, there's an entire generation of kids who've grown up and they don't yeah. understand that you know, what kids. we put up on. Yeah. Social media is not reality. Um, yeah. You know, I'm not at the range 24 7 shooting. God, I wish I was. Right. Uh, half these guys, you know, they, they, people take a bunch of pictures, you know, one time at a range and they go and it, it feeds their Instagram feed for like another mm-hmm. 37, 40 days. But I think that young dudes got to drink disconnect. more water. Yeah. Eat less talkies, disconnect, go see your dude, <laughs> you know, go see people in person, go talk to yeah. people. Um, I, I heard recently there's like, crippling porn addictions that's alien to me that's yeah. crazy i'm yeah. not trying to shame anybody but like i don't know why it's surprising you go to the front page of twitch there's a woman like there's like fucking whispering into your ear yeah about mommy milkers or something and dudes <laughs> are just throwing cash at. i hate to sound like i'm getting on a soapbox but it makes me look taller yeah. than i am so what well- I, 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 do I guess it's not so. surprising. I, I agree. I mean, I, I'm 100% in agreement with you, um, which, and I think some of it's enabled too by these places, you know, these different like lo- like different streaming services and social media because they want you to be on your phone, right? They're, like, they're trying yeah. to find ways to keep you addicted. And then people who haven't had, like, I mean, growing up, I mean, when I was like very young, we didn't have, we didn't even have cable. You know, like the only time I would see cartoons was like on Sunday when they would, you know, air them from like what? 7 a.m. to like 10 a.m. or something like that and Looney Tunes or whatever. And then from there, it's like whatever local broadcasting. And then, you know, I didn't get to, to really enjoy any of that for a while. And then, you know, obviously it's we're I think you and I, because we're kind of we're close in age, like we're you know, it was like we're on that cusp of of like technology and the internet and stuff like that and capabilities and online and whatever. So I think, you know, versus someone who nowadays is like everything is so digital. You know, everything is so digital. So, you know, like Kids are on their iPads. Kids are getting phones earlier on than, you know, like yeah. we were. So everything is wrapped around that perception. But yeah, especially with someone who, who I mean, you may not agree, but someone who's as, as successful as you are. And, you know, obviously you have a following and people are finding your page and, you know, seeing your stuff. And then they see like that and they just, like you said, they think they're like, you think they think you live at the range or like this is all you, you know. I mean, if, if I didn't know you personally, I wouldn't know that you you had a really like, an actual career job, and this is just a a, a nice little fun fun running thing to to go. But but yeah, it's it's interesting for sure. Yeah, the whole porn addiction, dude. That's a fucking crazy thing. But I mean, I guess it's not that crazy, like you said. But can you imagine, bro? Can you imagine that? Oh, oh I, I can't. Go, I, I, can't. Look at I don't. Even, I don't. I don't know what that looks like. Yeah. Like how do you? 
it's a, maybe it's because I'm like a low IQ caveman that I don't grasp yeah. the concept of an addiction like that. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know either. Like that to me is like a such a, it's a foreign concept. I mean, there and then people go to such foreign lengths. But I guess, I mean, fuck, we have something called OnlyFans now, so. I don't know. That's, you know, I guess it, it's not that far fetched when, you know, you're banking on someone who doesn't give a shit about you to post something that you pay for. <laughs> I was like, I made a joke about that the other day and I was like, I was like, you know, OnlyFans, porn stars are seething right now. <laughs> they are <laughs> furious that all these years they didn't know that people would have signed up for a subscription when they've been doing this shit and posting it for free. Fuck, you know. <laughs> it's like, well, can you imagine. Uh, hell, when what was it? When Justin TV was making that swap into Twitch TV, yeah, I was one of those naysayers. I'm like, watch other people play video games. This is never going to take off. Yeah, but that if, if you had like time traveled back and corrected corrected my Gosh, past self, man. like, hey, guess by the way, the most popular thing on the video game streaming platform will be a woman in a bikini dancing Dude. for a cheeseburger. You know, like that Isn't meme. That, well, have you have you seen the new the new trend? The new trend. Oh, I, I don't even what like is the new trend. So the new trend is like, and I've seen I've seen dudes and girls, but obviously it's obviously dominated by by women. But you know, but it's like reacting to like emojis, like them reenacting emojis. Have you seen that? What does that even mean, dude? It's so it makes you feel so uncomfortable. It is so just, I like, do. It's like just drool worthy. Like, I'm sorry if anyone has, like, been entertained by it. But, I mean, like, just seeing it is just like watching fucking paint dry. It's just like fucking... Hey, fuck them. If they take it personally, listener, if you're taking that personally, that's on you. That's weird. That shit's weird. Brain cells are dying. Yeah, you're right. I don't even know why I apologize. You know, I don't even know why I said sorry. Yeah, fuck that. That's a fucking weird thing to do. You should be doing something else to spend your time with. But, But, yeah, people are just obsessing over just the oddest fucking things. So, it's just interesting instead of, like, spanning concepts or whatever or... Or bettering themselves, or you know, or learning about something, but it is we're kind of in a weird time. And then you have AI stuff too, which is is kind of scary. And I, I think in a in a in a way, we probably won't see the full capabilities of that just in our lifetime. But but man, it's kind of scary. Like you know, especially behind closed doors and stuff that we probably don't know about that's being used or developed. Yeah, the AI. I'm, I'm sure they've they've worked uh, the AI stuff. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's really just from what I understand, like uh, weighted stats with, with some more steps, like into like putting a switchblade drone into like a Russian guy or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just uh, it's just definitely one of those other categories that's just far going far off the reserve and stuff. But yeah, I don't I don't know, man. I don't know. It's uh, it's definitely interesting to see. But yeah, people are kind of just kind of being disconnected from reality and stuff. And you know, I don't know if. I'm not really sure, I guess, but yeah, but Twitch and stuff. Yeah, but Twitch is weird too, man. I mean, like, then you have, then what, what's, what's the other, what's the other new service now? Is it Kick? Kick, yeah. Kick, competing one, you know, who can have the weirdest, the weirdest little, you know, major Twitch, Twitch streamers and stuff like that. It's the yeah. greatest thing ever to happen to the bug, man. More choices. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I, I was with you on the um, on the game streaming stuff and too. Like, I just I didn't understand that concept because I remember like watching my younger brother and he was watching something. I think like more like on YouTube. I was like, I just don't get it. Like, why would you want to watch someone stream when you can just you know, when you can play the game itself and whatever? But man, there's it's, for me, it's you know like I'm looking for an entertainment value, not necessarily more like experience. So you know, guys, like I think we talked about that before, like Doctor Disrespect and stuff. But have you have you been watching? Um, do you watch Jinxy, dude? Have you seen any of the Jinxie stuff? I hate to do it. No idea who or what Jinxie Damn, is. Damn, bro. I'm I'm about to about to open your world. I'm about to give you the red pill, dude. You're about to fucking have a great time. Yeah, you're gonna go down a rabbit hole. But yeah, he's a, he's like one of the new streamers, definitely like a Gen Z streamer, but dude, just so funny. Kind of like that same thing, you know, just like just knee jerk type reaction stuff, but pretty funny, pretty funny. Well, have you ever heard of Gothic King Cobra? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, not. But we're about to okay. bum out a bunch of people listening on Uh-oh. Spotify right now. Okay, let's see. G- Gothic King Cobra is probably the only streamer I've ever. I, I, when I say keep up with, I don't watch the guy every day, but um, I'll, I'll catch up on the weekend with some buddies. We'll you know we'll stream it in Discord and have a little. A view. People nowadays call it viewing party. We we yeah, call yeah. this watching TV with your buddies. So first, I told everybody to get off the computer and go touch grass, and I'm going to tell you guys how I watch this. <laughs> mentally deranged young man from Casper, Wyoming, shout out to Casper, Wyoming, uh, just 
deteriorate and decline in health and mental, I don't know, fortitude just slowly over and over. He does, dude, he does these drink combos where he <laughs> dumps, I don't know, a beer into like a blue moon, combines it with a mountain dew and calls it a cobra's mist. Or he makes oh these what he God. calls food hacks where he just, man, how do I explain that? There's a burrito that he leaves out and there's bugs in it. And then he eats the bugs. Oh, like the bug. Like I'm talking insects, baby. Dude, what so what is he what is he what does he stream on? What does he stream on exactly? Uh YouTube. YouTube okay, Live. Okay. okay, so it's he, YouTube. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. Oh yeah, man. He is if 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 any uh, would be listeners right now want to jump into him, don't don't watch his streams, don't go to his channel, don't sub to him. There's a bunch of other people who like do the you know they aggregate the uh aggregate pardon the yeah the content and then, then curate it and like edit it from there yeah boglum chronicles lennon line shout out to all those fucking boners <laughs> um bite-sized cobra vids i think is the most bite-sized popular <laughs> of of the guy man he dude, this guy has been putting stuff up on youtube since day one like almost one day one guys. on youtube yeah, yeah he's been going he he had this uh tarred fit a while back and like deleted his entire channel because he accidentally turned every video on or uh, unlisted some of them rather listed from the unlisted feature yeah and there were just <laughs> videos of him ripping a bong <laughs> and he thought he was gonna get arrested so he just deleted everything that's um, funny it had like a, there's been a couple fit. documentaries done on him <laughs> yeah there's there's Jeez. some youtube uh he's a very he's Has, not very accurate it doesn't uh, not oh this, oh man, Dark Lord Cobra. He's very charismatic. He rubs. <laughs> oh, this is the worst. This is gonna be the best podcast you've ever done, Max. It's now a Cobra, <laughs> podcast. Cobra podcast. He rubs Bond tactical soap on his skin and uh, thinks that it's gonna draw women to him. He makes magic wands. He can change uh, traffic lights with the magic wands. Okay, this is this is fucking crazy. Okay, are you know who Chris Chan is? I if I saw his face, I probably do. But say uh, this this guy, I think, is considered like a law cow. He's one of like the there's a dude named Cyrax who's a, who's a big law cow, just a complete degenerate that records himself. The Chris Chan guy was, I believe, one of the first dudes. Uh, Cobra Josh Sa- Joshua Faye Saunders. Uh, yeah, it's dude, bad dog stuff. That's fucking crazy. Okay, so so I will say though, looking at this guy's face, I've definitely seen clips of him. I've definitely oh, yeah. seen stuff of him like. Let's have a watch this one real quick. I linked it to you. Let's see. So it's looking at looking at a. Where did you link it to me? Before I I, I open it up. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, oh, this guy looks crazy as fuck, man. Uh, I linked it to you in Discord. Discord. Um, gotcha. And like the little whatever the studio chat. Is this playing through? Podcast just studio. Dude, where? I'm like watching, like, dude, this is like your, even like the whole like attire. This is obviously like an older one versus where. Oh yeah, this is from like 2014. Crazy. Clicked on the wrong thing. I'm back though. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, no worries. We'll come back to it because um, I thought the audio was gonna play directly through, but it's not. So, on uh, for another time. But yeah, dude, that's that's pretty funny. But dude, uh, you're like you're just like my. I have a I have a buddy, my good friend, uh, Keaton. He does the same thing. He'll find like these guys like that that maybe don't get a lot of views or looks or views and then they maybe blow up, but it's just like the most crazy off the wall fucking people who are like, who are just documenting their life. And it's just, you know, like just, just the craziest fucking circumstances. It's just like this. It's hilarious though. Yeah. Uh, Dude, he's out of his mind, Max. So does he still, uh, does he still put stuff up and everything? Oh yeah. Every other day, the, the, the pay pigs as we call them are always sending him money. (laughs) He's constantly overdrafting his account by um, spending money through PayPal via DoorDash. Uh, just if he orders a, a fast food item, you better believe that he has he doubles every ingredient that's on the burger or the pizza, and then adds every single other thing. So we're at this interesting point in in the Cobraverse, as as it's referred to. <laughs> oh um, we're we're through the looking glass, and people are no longer just tapping on the glass; they're like sending him food. And they're pranking him with it. And my favorite, I have to bring this up because we're talking about Cobra. Someone sent him a Subway sandwich, dude. And this dude opens it up and it's bread and 11 sauces. 
and it's just bread and 11 sauces and he's fucking mad about it and while he's mad that dude unwraps it and slowly eats it and it's just talking about how mad he is dude so about like, it that's like so stuff like that to me is just so funny because obviously he's doing it but he's not even doing it on purpose like it's not even on purpose to be like comedic He's just naturally doing that because, like, that's just what's in front of him. But he's upset. It's, like, obviously not meeting whatever, you know, obviously the fucking crazy sandwich regardless. Dude, that's oh, yeah. so someone, funny. Someone door dashed him McDonald's, but it was just 42 packets of ketchup. <laughs> and I, I think the bun to a burger, and that was it. Uh, I have, I do have to say this. I got to take this this take this point in the, uh, the conversation and tell the okay. listeners if they seek his content out. That dude talks a lot about, like, weird... I'm not soapboxing here politically. Weird LGBT stuff, sickos, pedophiles. Um, he has these things we call like the what is it? The five something like his 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 you know big titty goth girlfriend will be alive of age, sis. All these weird things, and I don't want these guys to get the wrong impression that he's 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 crazy. But it's a result of people tapping on the glass too much and yeah. telling him that you know he's bad and all these things. So he starts incorporating them into his personality so he'll say like, oh i like this thing but fuck sickos like oh yeah I, yeah i hate sickos more than i love ozzy osbourne and then the the, the trolls as he calls them you know the guys in the comments make it worse and yeah all can. the weird the weirdest darkest stuff he says is because it was injected into his weird aspergery autistic uh Dude. world it's it's not because he came up with it it's a direct, I believe, uh, thing from the environment. So it's, he's he's bad on his own, but that weird shit that was pushed into him, and now he's just kind of he talks about it when when someone you know over and over <laughs> all day long lit. tells him <laughs> he gets gas dude lit. he's <laughs> gaslit. Sometimes he needs to be gaslit, but I'm I'm done defending the guy because he's got a whole bunch of weird shit that you can hate him for. It's <laughs> yeah. not that stuff. That's always funny. It's like he has to continuously uh, defend himself so that people know, yeah, even though he, he does. gaslights himself. <laughs> it's awful. It's dude. Uh, it's hilarious. But. It's, yeah, I'm gonna say like I mean, obviously from the outside looking in, it's like it's it's honestly hilarious. It's, I mean, similar you know, with a bunch of other guys who were kind of like that who are pretty funny, but like, in, in, you know, what was it like accidentally funny? I guess, but that's dude, jeez, that's funny. Oh, bad. But um, so okay, so in terms of that, so we'll move we'll move forward. But yeah, now we can move on. We'll come yeah, back later. Yeah, yeah. So well, I'm, let me let me get some let me get some reps in and watch some more of uh, Gothic King Cobra. But um, so outside of that stuff, obviously you got some cool stuff working and everything. And excuse me, but um, yeah. So with with the new course and stuff. But uh, what's has there been anything anything else project wise or other people that you've met like these past past year or past couple months that you've really enjoyed or been able to meet or or new opportunities other than like, you know, courses and classes or something outside firearms and gear and stuff like that that you really, really taken up or really enjoyed? Not really, man. Not nothing specific. I don't, yeah. I don't do a lot on the social media anymore or interact with a lot of Instagram stuff when I don't need to mostly just talking to, uh, you know, answering DMS when I can yeah. doing the, the standard customer service, uh, it's weird to me to I don't know I don't I don't really know how to message someone like hey I like your content want to be friends yeah, or yeah. let's do something together like it just it just it's not me um, if someone that I thought was cool approached me and you know wanted to start some new thing I'd be open to it but I would imagine that like myself if other people if if I'm getting people you know in my DMs all the time wanting to do things or start new things or etc that that other people tenfold probably have you know. Yeah. Hey, why don't you do this with so and so? Because I don't, I don't know that guy, man, and we have no, we have no history together, and I'm just, I'm just a stranger to him, and I think it would be rude for me to, to do that. To, yeah. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, dude, that you don't know, um, do you want to do this thing with me? That yeah. you know, you have to split your money or your 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 time with. Isn't that uh, weird? Just, Isn't that a weird thing that people kind of like have indoctrinated? Because I see that a lot. Like, I have nothing against like the collaboration stuff like that, but I do yeah, see no. it like occasionally, you know, where people like kind of try just to force or push something for the sake of like, you know, I've even seen someone post like a thing on a story and I think I unfollowed them afterwards. And I was like, Oh, who would you guys like to see me collaborate with? Like what a very like invasive type, like <laughs> conversation started like, Oh, Hey, by the way, you know, my chat or my, uh, my followers think that I should, uh, so we should do a collab together. <laughs> pretty, yeah, I don't, don't want to put someone else in the position where they have to like, because I've been put in that position where it's like, hey, 
you know, these people want me to do this with you. What do you say? And I, I tell them like, no, thank you. I'm not interested. It has nothing to do with you. I just don't want to do that thing. Yeah. And it's not a good position to be in. It's uh, it's not rude or anything when I'm it's, on the, it's uncomfortable. the end of it. But yeah, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. No matter, regardless. People take it personally and it's it's not personal. Yeah. Um, some people have like approached me afterward like, oh, hey, you'll do this with that person, but not me. It's like, well, well now I know I shouldn't have done anything in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't feel entitled towards other people's time and that's out of my that's out of my uh, out of my brain crazy to to expect someone else to stop what they're doing or just to do something with me because I'm private tier group which is nobody I'm I'm literally yeah. nobody yeah. So, I mean, and that's, I think that's always a difficult thing too, especially when you have some people who I guess maybe look at you in a certain way based on like your page and everything like that and stuff you put out. And then, like you said, they, they, they don't understand that there is a reality outside, you know, they just kind of get incu- incorporated, incorporated, you know, what's incorporated? Jeez, man, damn boy. I need to fucking, I need to, I need to chill out a little bit. Can't say incorporated. But uh, you know, incorporated into like a social media and stuff like that. It's um, I don't know. It's, it's again, I think it comes comes back to people being entrapped into social media and, and like aspects and stuff like that. You know, but yeah, it's very very odd. You know, I'm about to say I'm I'm still impressed with you with on social media. You know, stuff like that because um, it's always an enigma. Have you um have you created a threads threads account yet, dude? Have you started? You've been pushed to that? Probably yet? Uh, probably won't. That this seems like more or unneeded work that's yeah. one more thing for me to check like at this point it feels like i'm checking my mirrors when i'm driving when i'm on my phone like, yeah oh, better check instagram better check telegram better check my totally email agree. better check this but going back to the um the what you said a minute ago what really baffles me is the how i i don't know how i got in tune with the whole hype beast thing i don't mm-hmm. know what i what i hype up uh, there's i don't make anything limited for the point you know, the purpose of being limited there's mm-hmm. just Dude, you know what? Anyone listening? I had no idea that anyone was going to buy cufflinks. I'm, thank you for buying them. I'll, I'll make more in a different, you know, colorway because people still want them. But I had no idea anyone was going to buy those, so I didn't make a lot of them. Yeah, uh, it was you know, it's a risk when we make stuff. On, yeah, on the first one, and, and yeah. Because you, when you make a smaller amount, things cost more, and I don't want to have that stuff sitting around on the shelf in my office, going like, "Well, that sucks," and no one of that. And that's fine, but. Or I, I recently named the splatter glow in the dark patch that people have been asking for for a long time the super bummed out eBay comments you know hype beast patch and I didn't take a picture of it uh, specifically because I mean people are probably going to buy that and I hope that that's what they wanted you know I, I yeah. hope they were surprised because I'm probably never going to do those things again. Yeah, what's it's interesting to, too to see stuff like that too because again like you're like one of the most easy like all you have to do is just sign up for whatever or be notified and then you'll you'll be able to purchase whatever it's not like it's ever been capped or limited well i guess i guess what the, the cufflinks maybe it it was you know but but even then mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like i'm right there with you like in terms of like cufflinks because you know when you take a risk on a certain product that no one else has done or something kind of more unique or you you know stylized like that's that's a that's a risk i mean you know you know it may be one of those things where it could end up making you lose a lot of money or maybe it does really well so that way you know to move forward with it but so that so i'm guessing they, they did they did well though they did the cufflinks they they did well, and I'm awesome. uh, nice. very appreciative of it. And I'll, I'll, I will meet the market demand with yeah. uh, hopefully a supply. Like, and that's another thing. Like, if someone is gonna gonna line up essentially digitally and spam their, you know, the I don't know if you can hear it, spam their F5 button, waiting for or mm-hmm. their phone and wait to buy my stuff. I owe it to them to make to hopefully make enough so everybody can get that dopamine hit or get that patch yeah. they can put on their headliner or put on their plate carrier. It's not that I. I mean, I really don't care. And, and, and I'm apathetically about the guys who want to flip it. Like if you want to use our stuff that I make, you know, as currency to trade, that's, that's rad, dude, trading stickers and patches for stuff. I've seen some pretty wild trades offered for, you know, warm, fuzzy patches for the uh, dude. What is it? My buddy Nate's patch, uh, the crimson guzzler slurpy thing, like mm-hmm. just his red going for like three grand. That's what? gnarly. You yeah, serious? dude, that's pretty. That, yeah, that's pretty cool. That someone values that much, and then you know maybe they can get something with it. Maybe they can get some ammo. Maybe they can get part of a night vision system. Maybe they can get a laser. That's cool too. But I I, I put those guys in such they're probably such a small minority in the customer base that I want to cater specifically to people who are the regular dude. Yeah. It it does not make me feel good when I get a, a message like, hey dude, I'll be on night shift. You know, is there any way you can make the the release this time? And it's 
I wish I could, but the best next best thing I can do is make way more than I think that are going to sell, you know? Yeah. So hopefully yeah. that guy gets the chance when he gets off of work. Cause if he's going to, you know, after a long shift of work and whatever fucking salt mine he's in breathing in that black lung dust, uh, I want him to have the opportunity to, to get the shirt, man. To, yeah. Cause it's, it's cool. Yeah. It's, it's tough too. Like that's, that's, that's like one of those ex- examples of stuff where, you know, you do it once or you do it for one person and then something that gets wind and all of a sudden, you know, you have to kind of like find ways to accommodate every single person. And then when you start accommodating too much, it's, it's when you start kind of getting stretched too, too far. And I've, I've done it before, like where I've just done too much. I'm like, to see if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't be my, I wouldn't be in the circumstance that I'm in, or I wouldn't have, you know, missed, yeah, you know, missed, missed, missed up this one portion because it gets everything gets mixed up, and you know, as long as everything goes like it's supposed to, then everything moves cleanly. But as soon as yeah. you start kind of breaking out of whatever type, you know, I don't want to say what scheduling, I guess, is when things go awry. You know, it always happens, dude. It always happens. Mm-hmm. Always very frustrating to to handle and deal with but but yeah so yeah i don't know man i don't know it's, it's definitely definitely a circumstance it's one of those unlucky things there was a time where i could if a guy put in a couple orders i he could email me and i could combine them but at this point i've had to tell a bunch of people i can't do that anymore outside of you know putting a, a line mm-hmm. item up on the website for x amount of dollars because when literally a 200 people do that there is not enough time in the day to to, yeah. to combine all those orders and uh, issue the shipping refunds go through and make sure that i'm not sending duplicate orders because i've done that before um i'm not yep. mad that people got double stuff but it doesn't feel good to give away 80 80 of anything no yeah absolutely um, yeah i'm gonna say like at, at that point it's like one of those things well it's all it's out the door it's yours now so i can't say you know and you can't go back like hey man can you send that one thing back that was an accident you know absolutely not yeah, yeah that that's theirs at that point yeah um, which is crazy too cuz i've i've heard i've seen that happen too and like i've had it where like you know i was moving too fast and i i shipped someone the the wrong patch so like you know they got whatever and then like they've asked me like like hey man forgot this patch it's no big deal i'm like no nah, man I'm, I'm, let me send you the let me fin- let me send you the correct patch and i was like he's like oh what do you even do with the other one i was like keep it man like i'm not going to sit here and ask for something i gave to you incorrectly like it's it's officially yours it's on the house now but yeah i mean i've had stories of people saying like hey <laughs> such and such actually asked me for you know like i've had experiences where people have asked me to send whatever incorrect order back you know <laughs> it's like crazy dude absolutely crazy i have uh, i have issued rmas for people when i you can correctly sniff them out in an email when you know they're trying to get it for free oh hey mm-hmm. this is a but it's like a, a, a like a sizing issue. Like, hey man, yeah. let me send you an RMA for that, so I can you know throw that oh, give yeah. it to somebody else. Well, what do you mean I can't keep it? Well, you, well, I mean I can't force you to give it back, so I guess it's yours now. Yeah, well, like sizing and stuff like that. I think that's like common knowledge, though, right? Like, you know, when if you got the wrong size, like if you order one and it doesn't fit well, it's like what you're obviously not going to keep it if you order whatever size and you know it doesn't fit. You know, like well, okay, here's the this such and such. If it's in good condition, whatever, blah, 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 then you can exchange it and I have one spare or whatever, or, you know, yeah. et cetera, or it's got a hole in it. Okay. Yeah. Send me the, send me the bad shirt again. You know? Yeah. At, yeah. At the end of the day, it's just, it's just a shirt. I'm not going to yeah. get bummed out about it. If someone else wants to get all spooled up, I'll let them, I'll send the correct shirt. Um, do my best to, if I, you know, we don't have it in stock anymore as a result of, you mm-hmm. know, USPS still eats them. Yeah. Yeah. Have you still have, I, have you still had issues with US, with a uh, post service? Oh, every, every time, same as everybody else does. Yeah. Whenever I go out to Vegas to visit like the house party guys, I'll, I'll, I'll ask them, Hey man, you know, sanity check. I talked to, uh, you know, grave solutions. When you guys drop stuff off, like, have you ever, cause, dude, we hand everything off. We don't wait for them to scan it cause it would take too long, yeah, but right. I, we have, we keep packing uh, labels to confirm. Like when a dude emails me and says, Hey, tracking hasn't updated a past label created, you know, what's going on. I go down to the dungeon and we hunt down that label to make sure we packed it. And lo and behold, we packed it. So for whatever reason, we don't know what happens. As you know, we don't, no one knows what happens. Once you drop that stuff off, who, who, whatever USPS is doing with it, they're doing with it. So, oh man, I was getting, I'm going off on a tangent about, about those guys, but yeah, we still see it. I asked some, uh, some buddies recently mm-hmm. if they had experienced that and they had, they did, they handed in, some signed NFA forms that they were sending into the ATF and they Ooh, put shit. them, you know, in specific packaging for, yeah, for, um, to ship like tubes. And, uh, they gave them to the, the post office guy, you know, the postman who was there, they watched the dude scan it in and walk away. And lo and behold, all those things went missing. It just never made it. Yeah. 
who knows? I, I yeah, doubt no that the post guy, yeah, just threw him in a ditch or whatever, but it happens. Um, yeah, someone gets sidetracked and then it's just loose paper and then all of a sudden everyone's looking around like, uh, you know, we're we supposed to do this. Uh, let's, we'll just throw in the trash. <laughs> and <laughs> and really with shipping, it is just a numbers game. You know, yeah. we, we, I'm, we're fortunate enough to ship, you know, hundreds, thousands of packages sometimes and four or five will go, you know, four or five go missing. That sucks. Send me an email. I'll make it right. Don't be a dick. I, I want to, I want you to get your stuff. I, yeah. I don't. I'm not grifting anybody over, you know, thirteen dollars in shipping. It's not going to change my yeah. life. But to say that, and that's been super. That's been super interesting too. Where I've had people who didn't tell me, like either a they're still waiting on their package, or something hasn't been delivered, or like you know what it's like missing a patch or whatever. And it always blows my mind. Like, well, I'm not sitting here doing this on purpose to be malicious. Like, if it's most likely it was either a misplaced or something has been updated or scanned, or et cetera, et cetera. Like, you know. Let me let me know because like like you just said like I want you to get something that you order like I want you to get my stuff obviously like you know, oh yeah I get, want you to have it I yeah think it's I want cool. you I think it's yeah. cool that you think it's cool yeah so it's like definitely it's, it's always very interesting when that kind of pops up and or, or it gets showcased and stuff it doesn't happen very often though for the most part people are like hey man appreciate it I love it and, but uh you know it's it's even been funny when people are like uh you know like something was like met, left out by accident or whatever or missed or miscounted and people are like expecting not to get the whatever correct quantity of whatever and like oh yeah it's not a big deal but i love it thanks so much man and like or maybe it's just baiting me into saying like oh whatever but i mean regardless i would have i'm I'm gonna replace it if it's missing from your order you know so it's like a sticker like you said it's a couple bucks it's not that big of a deal so you know it's good to make good on stuff but yeah but um what's been one of the funnest or the most uh what's been one of the coolest items that you've released in the past past year or so or i guess past couple months Cool, coolest like can you clarify that like what yeah, i like yeah, a lot yeah. or what in yeah, terms of yeah, like yeah. oh it's unique and neat yeah yeah let me let me yeah let me clarify that. uh i guess like one of the most one of the f- the funnest projects or like something that you enjoy doing it didn't even have to be the most successful just something that you that you made or was created that like met exactly what your expectations were and it came out you know it was just a really cool unique product that you enjoyed the uh the privateer stash i thought was really fun it's just gold foil wrapped chocolate coins in a little sack. Yeah. Um, I could have done like challenge coins maybe someday or the, uh, the have gun will travel one. You know, I, yeah. I grew up watching that show with my dad about the, you know, palette and the gunfighter. Mm-hmm. And I liked it enough that I got it tattooed on my hand by um, John Caleb. Shout out to chapter X tattoo in orange. Hell big, yeah. big, uh, big fan of John Caleb. Um, and it, it was just kind of neat or like the, the hourglass on my other hand, but Probably the, the coins, yeah. just because they're stupid. They're they're fun. They're novelty. If you get mad about it, I don't know. It's on you. And if they melt in the mail, I'm sorry. <laughs> Send me an email. <laughs> so so uh, question. So in regards to like the chocolate coins, so like how'd you go about? How'd you go about getting that made? Or like you know like what was the process on that? Like how how did you find that out? I mean it's just a it's just a cool like it's a very unique thing regardless. But like you know where'd you go about finding that exactly? But that's a great question and uh, maybe a good, a good answer for everyone listening because a lot of people hit me up about stuff like that. Uh, how to start their own little thing is just just hopped on Google, man. How do I make how do I make chocolate coins, custom yeah. coins, and then email those companies or you know submit your artwork to them and see what they charge you. Some of them have you know uh, minimums in like the the tens of hundreds of pounds of candy that you have to buy, and some don't. Uh, just problem solving uh you know thought process how do we how do we make this thing happen well if i wanted to make a a handbag the first thing you got to do is hop on the internet and how to make Mm -hmm. a handbag and they're gonna give you videos on legitimately how to you know cut material and sew it together and some they're gonna be like send a a file to a guy in china and then you know a bunch of bags show up or you know (laughs) a, a Oh, I think it's Alpine Design Works makes a lot of cool yeah. stuff. And that's as simple as like, maybe send that guy a message. Hey, I'm so-and-so. I have this idea, you know, is this something you would be interested in making? And if so, what does it cost? And what, you know, what do I need to, to get you? And um, how long can I expect it to go? Oh, with um, like the mag bags, I hit up Stu of Estac and he's a, a great guy. And sometimes he sends me what he wants to send me. And sometimes he sends me what I ask for. Uh, <laughs> How, how how to make of this thing it's it's really just ask the question in google and then follow the the, mm-hmm. the thought process to the very end and whether you want to spend the money 
to make it is up on you. Yeah, which I th- that's again, I think another thing too that people kind of get lost into is in, in terms of learning skills and stuff like that. You know, like learning how to do something. They just kind of, I guess, like sometimes like they're just find, trying to find the the path of least resistance or the the path that maybe would they think is the the easiest way of learning something. But uh, first of all, shout out to uh, Alpin Design Works. Uh, really good dude, by the way. I just got to chat with him and meet him for the first time, not in person, but you know, had a phone call and super cool guy. So yeah, very, uh, very cool guy that's very talented. So kind of a funny little story with that. But um, but yeah, so, but yeah, I, I agree. I think there's a lot of people kind of just, they like the initiative, I guess. I guess this kind of, kind of keeps coming back to the whole phrase of like people just being so stuck or with, you know, fast response or whatever in terms of being just surrounded by social media, I guess. I don't know, the internet, I guess, mm-hmm. kind of ruins people's, you know, ability to getting hit with the, let me Google that for you. It's always funny. Yeah, and, and then the, there's there's that, uh, and the other side of the coin, that like, how cool is it that we have a little magic box that yeah. when I don't know the answer to something, hopefully I can hop on and some Figure other guy will out. have the answer for Yeah, yeah. someone else yeah. will have figured the problem out and maybe put the steps out there. Um, it's, it's real simple. Yeah. It, it can be. Yeah, but exactly, exactly. I think some people just lack the willpower. They just want someone to walk them through it personally or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's always... Always interesting how that works out. But oh, you, you know what? Do uh, cool stuff. All the stuff I've done with Echo Arms. That guy is he's fun mm-hmm. to work with. He knows how to how to execute things. We're doing magazine base pad extensions. We're not you know we're not looking to change or innovate. I just want to have some cool base pads so I don't have to buy Terran Tacticals anymore. N- nothing against Terran Tactical or any other manufacturer mm-hmm. out there, but I'm in the position where I can make some and cool no support. money will be made off of these. Yeah, yeah it all all of them what we charge the customer for the base pad is pretty much what it costs to make it, anodize it, engrave it, and then send it. Yeah. Um, I just want these things to exist. Yeah. And, and you know, how, how do we, how do we do that? We're working on a couple MP5 optic mounts. Um, Very cool. I had Man. some really cool ideas for Damn. like light and laser mounts for the MP5, but shout out to, I believe it's like HRS, HRF concepts. Mm-hmm. And there's another fella and those dudes do some really cool, really cool MP5, et cetera, uh, like accessory mounts and parts. So mm-hmm. big fan of those guys. Yeah, Echo Arms. Where, where's, I think we've talked about Echo Arms before, but where's Echo Arms based out of? Down here in California with the rest of us tards. Uh huh. Interesting. But say, I, for some reason, I thought they were up in the Pacific Northwest. I wasn't sure where they were where they were out of specifically but yeah they're, I, I think that's i don't really know too too much about them but yeah i've heard i've always heard some good stuff about them and stuff like what is what is their main thing that they do light mounts uh it's not my business to share some certain sure, things sure. but the the guy behind echo arms is responsible for more cool stuff in the gun industry mm-hmm. than people really know yeah. about it's uh all these all these hype beast guys you got to get get it on these like these rifle drops or other drops the guy from Echo Arms designed a lot of that, if not all of it. Yeah, it's, it's funny how that works too, because I feel like that there's he's not the only gentleman who's like been behind the scenes, being a part of industry and stuff like that, and maybe doesn't get I don't say doesn't get the credit, but is, isn't as well known of or being you know broadcasted as as revolutionary or like you know being a big part of a lot of different things as they should be. Um, but it's it's interesting to you know it's interesting to find those stuff out. You know, it's just you know. Just funny how it works, but but yeah, what's uh that's that the whole the, the yeah the new thing I guess now is like the rifle hype beast drops and stuff like that, which I think is pretty interesting. You know, I don't know I don't know if I agree with that one too too much, but you know I don't know whatever, but yeah. So I mean, if it's a cool gun and you only make twenty five of them, hey. there's at least you know a thousand dudes who want to buy it for sure. Oh, for I sure. guess yeah. I just mean like in, a, in terms of like a market strategy of of making everything that you, that you release in that type of I guess in that type of like release way, I guess. But I get the same time, you know, if people are willing to buy it. I mean, what are you to, who are you to, to deny? Who, who am I to deny them? You know. So I mean, it, it, that's what I tell the dudes who get mad about it in the yeah. comments. Like, hey man, like, if you're not going to buy it, then why are you mad that somebody else did? It's it's a it's a it's a, it's a problem that solves itself. Don't reward that company that you're critical of with your money, and that's how you punish them. Yeah. You just look like an asshole and an idiot when you mouth off in the in the comments about oh, something yeah. silly. Definitely agree. Yeah, that's definitely something I don't know. I don't know. Some of that's just it's just kind of crazy how people react to some of it as well. Like you know, in terms of like 
you know, not being able to get something. So they pitch a hissy fit or whatever, you know, in terms of comments and stuff. It just always kind of blows my mind that people have the, and it's normally grown men too, which is kind of fucking oh, crazy. Yeah. Only, only grown dude. I've never seen it from anyone young. It's only grown dude. Yeah. Very weird. Very odd. But anyways, though, so uh, so moving outside of like a lot of that stuff, is there any? So you are, well, you already said about the cool project working, and so that's coming up. But uh, but other th- other than that, though, I mean, what you what you been up to, man? Any other hobbies or anything else that you've been interested in learning about or or kind of developing your skill set with? Uh, much to the dismay of everyone listening, I've been lifting a lot less. Uh, I've yeah. really limited my 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 caloric intake to to lose a little bit more weight. There's a couple courses I want to take where there is a weight limit. Like really? aerial target stuff. Oh yeah. Like anytime you're on a helicopter, that shit that costs money and you can't be fat. Interesting. So, to know that. Missed out on sense. a cool green line class. Uh, I want to go to the next one. Uh, aerial target engagement seems fun. It, uh, who doesn't like flying around on a helicopter? Yeah. Yeah. And if you get to have a gun and look cool, even better. Right. That's very uh, cool. Shout out to Don from Green Line and, and all those guys. Uh, that's the, I'm trying to get into those classes. Yeah. And he's out of, he's out of Vegas too, right? He, he travels around. Uh, he's from the East Coast somewhere. I think uh, east, oh. uh, s- Eastern Seaboard type of deal, like in the South-ish yeah. Carolinas, so, maybe. So somewhere I'm gonna close get it by. Wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I remember when uh, during SHOT Show and stuff like that, I think when we had chatted that you were going to a class, similar time frame oh, or, yeah. or something like that. Dark Lab. Yeah, Dark yeah. Lab. Great class. Anyone on the fence about taking one of those classes, it's fun. The class changes every time you go. Uh, I was going to say that earlier about Darcy. Those guys change the class up and improve it mm-hmm. and upgrade the quality all the time. They're always adding new stuff, so it's really great. Yeah, I've, I've taken Dark Lab twice. Both times were great. Um, lots of cool stuff to do. Uh, big boy rules apply. You're going to be doing – there's no there's no tactics, but there's a lot of techniques that they're teaching, buddy drills, uh, moving and shooting, positively identify, you know, identifying mm-hmm. quickly. And it's funny how it never looks like it does on Instagram where dudes are just shooting really, really fast and you don't get to see their hits or even hear them. But they're they're mag dumping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I was going to say, because even doing stuff like that, it, it probably changes your perception and how you visualize stuff as well in terms of like, you know, getting content done or made. Does it, does it like does it like alter the way that you've made stuff or made like content or pictures and stuff like that or videos? Because obviously you want to authenticate you don't want to seem like you're a poser or like you know don't actually train because you're actually one of the few people that i know that actually trains i mean you go you go pretty hard dude like you train going to all the different various classes and and expanding your skill set so that's 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 really cool it's definitely someone who's you know actually saying what they're they're speaking but does that change like the perception of it if there's if there's dudes out there who want to sell their their time and their experience and their wisdom and all these experiences that they've learned and you know some of them have lived through to you for 500 bucks for a couple of days it's usually worth listening to yeah. you know the the stories they have a, a, there's not there's a lot of deviance in between these classes that I've gone to in terms of what the what the teacher is to the instructor is teaching and why they're teaching it but at the end of the day it's just shooting a gun at a paper target or a steel target or it's you know, it might be it's static or moving around. Mm-hmm. So, at this point in time, I, I'm I'm looking for the the wisdom or the what would you do in this situation or what did you learn from doing this? Uh, I've been shooting a, a, a gun since I was a kid. I don't know that I'm ever going to get better at it than I am now, unless I went into like some sort of competition minded mm-hmm. thing where at that point you're trading like accuracy for time and you know C zones and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. I just want to get better. I don't want to be a liability when I have a gun. <laughs> if you ever have to employ it. For for any reason, if you're shooting a, a I don't know some sort of big cat on your property or a squirrel or a crackhead, you don't <laughs> you don't want to miss. You know? Yeah, absolutely, and, and be ready for whatever type of situation that you end up having to confront, instead of just being like you know indecisive or unprepared entirely. So, but mm-hmm. yeah, very cool, very cool. Well, man, hey, man, uh, what are any? I was trying to think. Is there anything else, dude? Is there anything other cool things that you've been able to? be a part of recently or any kind of type of groups or any type of like meetups or anything like that. Cause I know you guys have had some, some, some West, like West coast meetups that I'm jealous of. Oh, you of. know what? I don't know how I didn't think of that, man. Yeah, dude, the, we had the second annual West coast, uh, second sorry, West annual. side gun club cookout, uh, West side and Maddie's patties and a bunch of grad dudes showed up. We had, um, Noveski came out, sub came out, house cool. party came out. Of course, Maddie's patties, uh, gorilla tactical. Those guys were cool. Who else? A uh, dirty kid was there. Um, there oh, were some local yeah. dudes, uh, uh, local guys who were 
uh, like trainers or former been there done mm-hmm. that. So we brought the deadlift platform out. Lots. I talked a lot of shit to a lot of kids. Like, hey, <laughs> you gonna come pull this fucking bar, man? Like, I want. I, I walked up and down the line, handing out like weightlifting patches. Like, come see me. Like, come, come, come get the four hundred, the four hundred five deadlift. Come, come lift with all the dudes. And a lot of guys chickened out. I'll tell you what, like. I heard, I heard some of the most boneheaded fucking excuses ever. Like, oh, I got to go to a thing next week or I got to do this shit. The most honest dudes there were just like, I don't want to do it. Hey, man, that's tight. If you don't want to do it, I'm not going to I'm not going to fuck with you. But don't give me some cheese dick answer like why you can't. No, it's <laughs> you won't. You don't want to. It's not yeah. can't. Very few dudes there. Like other other re- legitimate responses were. You know, I just got back from jujitsu and I didn't know this was going to be here and I don't want to injure it. That's respectable too. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just to say, are you still doing a lot of some of the weightlifting pouches, patches and stuff like that? I, I, I feel like I've, I've met the market demand for them. I don't know how many more people are going to buy. I don't want to make too many. And then we get back to that conversation where I, you know, I, I mm-hmm. make a finite amount and apparently I'm hype beasting it. Uh, stay mad nerds but uh, I, i'll do a run again soon i still don't know how we're gonna uh, compose the 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 bench press one i'd like to do one for pull-ups i myself don't do pull-ups i'm built Ooh. for comfort not for speed you know yeah i'm, and, uh, I'm right there with you I, I hate doing pull-ups dude hate doing them that, well, i figured like what what is even a good number like do 20 pull-ups you get the patch do x amount of pull you know the standard yeah, person i don't think sure. can do any pull-ups at all so there's no first patch to sell yeah, I'm about to say, like, I'm not even sure, because I know for a while, I'm, I'm not even sure. Like, I mean, I, I mean, damn, dude, I, I, don't even, I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't even really tell you. Because, um, I mean, even then, then you have, like, the wide grip, wide grip pull-ups, close grip, whatever, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. And then you have some people who don't who don't believe that, like, the like the palm in, palm inside the, you know, on the bar is counts as a pull-up. So you can't pull up like that. You have to pull up with, like, your palm is facing the bar, away, you know, away from your body and stuff uh dips were always kind of fun you know i don't even know why i used to do dips all the time dude i would do dips all the time and then i would do weighted dips and like my triceps just never i just have bad genetics for for triceps for triceps but um yeah it was just crazy but yeah tr- uh, dips were fun i remember seeing this one guy he was like a twig but he was like it turns out he was a gymnast and dude he could do some crazy dips like two cookies and he was doing like for reps for like 20 reps and dude it just it was just mind-blowing it was fucking crazy but super like athletic just dude uh, gymnasts actually are pretty fucking scary like they're kind of like sleeper builds i guess in a way so you let's say yeah uh gymnasts yeah do they have all that fun gymnasts have all that functional strength yeah, yeah. like you said total sleeper builds but uh let's see the, the cookout what a great turnout that was a lot of a lot of cool guys uh they're the playing uh cornhole which i feel weird saying cornhole is such a weird <laughs> name for a game dude i didn't know what the point. name of that game was for like up until college to be honest with you like maybe even after college i was like yeah it's the game where you know you have the big boards and you just throw like the bean bag what's that fucking called oh you mean cornhole i was like no way this thing no way it's called fucking cornhole. Yeah, there's no way dude <laughs> they, uh, the noveski kid that guy was like destroying people at cornhole every time i'd walk by he was beating somebody I game. think it's all he did while he was there, just game. killing dudes. <laughs> game, game, <laughs> just blouses, game, bodying people in cornhole, <laughs> putting money down, throwing the throwing the dice on fucking cornhole. That's pretty funny. So, like, when you do like the cookouts and stuff, what is is it just kind of like a good general meet and greet and getting able to put faces to folks and everyone kind of being able to come out and meet up and get like some some one, I'm gonna say one of one, but like you know just opportunity stuff. Uh, yeah, kind of. There's no a. Way. It's cool to to kind of catch up with guys that I haven't seen in a yeah. couple of years, or dudes that are um, genuinely great men who are fun to be around. Uh, you feel lighter on your feet, probably probably too much because they're they're better than you are type of deal. Like uh, the dude, the Alex guy from Mo, Mojave Repeater, great dude. See him once a year. Uh, ho- hopefully he comes back again next year. Just a genuinely authentic good mm-hmm. dude. Um, the West Side Gun Club guys, I don't see them a lot. You know, we live a couple hours away. Good dudes. Uh, all the guys from Vegas come out or just guys you talk to on the internet and kids flew out from like across the nation to just to go have a hamburger with everybody. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool. I'm not saying I feel bad too because Maddie's Patty's is, is right up the road. They're not that far. So 
you so because you, you haven't way. gotten ha- gone and had one yeah i haven't i haven't and that's like that's definitely like been the stylized burger that i've kind of just started like really really enjoying like the past two years so yeah i know i've been i've actually mentioned or said something to him about going up and meeting them and the just yeah, scheduling wise it just hasn't hasn't made made much make the effort man i know, I know you can yeah make the i know time. That- yeah you're right and i was about to say that that's definitely a part of it too it's like you know just real just putting time aside to just just to take a step forward and just committing to stuff and, and getting it knocked out yeah definitely yeah, need to Ma- matthew of matthew's pathews is one of those dudes who is just a genuinely mm-hmm. just a great dude he work, works hard um they're expanding i think they have employees now uh, a bit of lore for the nerds who think Ooh. that he uh, he took the uh, the Matt uh, Matty Masson name. Uh, Matt had that uh, had that uh, that brand name years before Matty Masson started that stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's got all the paperwork to prove it to. It's pretty cool. I was gonna say like um, I mean I didn't think that someone who was branding themselves that way or was like you know hanging out with you know y'all or whatever would would really do that as well like you know be someone to like rip or something like that. But I did. That was the first thing I thought of when I when I first saw it, Matt the Maddie's pat. I was, I was like, it's not Matt Matheson. I was like, damn. I was like, how the fuck did I not know he was in South Carolina? And then when I looked at, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is a different guy. I was like, huh, interesting. And I was like, oh, man, I don't know. So. Damn! Thanks for ruining a, a question for a pon- possible podcast. So I'll oh, just forget the yes, just, dude. I'm can I can I run kidding. and use the bathroom real quick? I'm yeah, so- yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, Max. Good. I'll be right back. Ooh yeah, ooh yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, man. So I mean, we'll we'll start kind of wrapping it up, anyways, because you know I'm getting, right. I'm getting a little fucking hungry. But um, but yeah. So um, you know, and that's cool, man. Like, uh, dude, I'm I'm again. Like, I feel like I'm. That's definitely on my my to do list of things. Is one attend get out there meet you guys get to meet you finally you know whether it be a meet at a class or something mutual etc cetera, etc cetera. but also like being able to to do or host an event like that i think would be has definitely been on something that i've wanted to do for quite some time and maybe kind of start making some 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 room towards and you know making some steps towards because i think uh some other people have started to kind of get the same notion that there should be something on the the east coast or at least an attempt or something you know yeah, there's been a couple dudes who've asked us if we'll, you know, go out there and do that. And my answer mm-hmm. to that is that uh, probably not, because everyone I know and love is over here on the West Coast, and not the whole like the best coast thing. I mean, it, there's it rhymes for a reason. Uh, the culture's different, you know. It's just a yeah. different thing that we do out here. You, we have to do like a crawfish boil out there or something fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, what's from dude? It's funny that you were saying that because some we were just talking to someone and I was like, yeah, I could do a boil. <laughs> so that's exactly what I would do. <laughs> like a low country boil or like a crawfish boil. Because <laughs> it's easy, dude. It's fucking good. It's delicious. So fuck you, man. <laughs> no, so crawfish? Yeah, shrimps is bugs. You get fucking all you dudes. God, <laughs> dude, I love it, dude. I like. I fucking eat. I just eat that shit up, dude. I'm a fucking mongoloid. You stink like... Oh, dude. <laughs> but uh, but that's funny though. So so you have taken a, sl- a small like a little bit of a, a break on um uh, on the lifting portions and stuff like that, and just as in yeah, terms just, of reconfiguring it a little bit. A lot, for lack of a better term, I'm still lifting, but they're more like the bodybuilder movements and yeah. that like lots of arms, Compound, lots of delt stuff, yeah, accessory yeah, compound stuff. movements. Because pr- previously I was really just doing deadlift, bench press, squat, and then accessory work for that, but. I have a bunch of adjustable stuff up here in the, in the office that I use. Uh, bring them the you know bring the weight down, stay active, all that stuff. Same yeah. thing that all the young men listening should do: eat right. lots of protein, drink lots of water, yeah. eat fiber. Yeah, give give other people the benefit of the doubt, dudes. When you get mad at that guy in traffic, that that could be your sister just fucking freaking out because she's bad at driving because that's just how women are. You know, give people <laughs> yeah. give people three to five seconds. You know what I mean? Just just wait, just listen. Yeah. Yeah, it's it is it's 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 interesting too in terms of stuff like that because because I definitely think you've been like a catalyst like you and then like uh, Pew Therapy has been really good. He's like motivated people to like you know get moving and stuff like that. Yeah, I, think it's been I really love cool. that. Yeah, and he's a, he's a really good dude as well, really good dude. But uh, Pew Therapy but yeah. is yeah, but it's 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 interesting too in terms of stuff like that because it definitely seems like it's kind of grown. Uh, I don't want to say community wise. I don't want to say industry or community wise, but I definitely seem like it's been an emphasis has been put on. So I, I kind of attribute it to to you two really when I see start seeing some stuff like that. But in terms of like dieting, I know you said um kind of changes some stuff up and then obviously kind of redirecting. But um what what about like protein? Like what's your protein intake right now? Like how's cutting calories and stuff like that? Do cutting calories isn't I think cutting I think you know, actually adding calories to like gain weight like you know clean wise is actually more difficult than cutting calories but 
how's that process been kind of re-gearing your, your cleric intake? Um, it's mostly just making the correct decision every time yeah. you and I, you, Hey man, when, when you put that pizza, you know, in your mouth, you know, you're not supposed to fucking eat it and you do it anyway. Mm. And it's just overriding that like, Oh man, you know, that cheesy goodness. Just, I just like to grind beef. I just go buy beef at the store and we have a yeah. grinder here and I fry that up and, you know, drain a little of the fat out and have that with some rice cauliflower and just eat lots of meat. You say satiated. Mm -hmm. uh, vegetables that are fibrous here and there. Um, it's really just, you know, cutting out all the little things in between. Like you're at a buddy's house, like, oh, here, here, man, have some of these. Like, oh, you go back on your diet tomorrow. Or, you know, you do that over and over and over, make those bad decisions. Yeah, and you feel up. like shit in the middle of the night. Yeah, and they add up and everything like that. Yeah, it's it's definitely interesting, too. And and I think it's always funny, too, in terms of people who, like, um, who don't want to try and rely on actual, like, meat you know, meat intake in order to obtain their, their protein because, you know, but in terms of like, you know, protein stuff like that, I, you know, it's what I've seen a lot of lately, like a different like products and like protein bars, protein powders, a lot of, a lot of vegan way a lot of vegan protein, which I'm not sure how familiar you are with that, but I'm pretty sure based on like, there were some studies that like you came out that that vegan protein, like like protein blocks in comparison to like your standard like whey blocks and stuff like that, doesn't actually do or accommodate as much as you would think. It's like a fifth or something like a half, you know, versus like, you know, what a, a one block away would do. So it's always interesting too when people are taking that stuff. You start looking at some of these protein bars, man, and they're like, there's a reason why, you know, they're cutting corners and stuff like that to pack those things full. You know what? Speaking of protein, uh, with that, the question you asked, like meeting people and networking, mm -hmm. and I met this fitness trainer, Andrew Serrano, and we found him because this guy was putting up on his Instagram stories, like making chicken milkshakes, like where you just add chicken, the cookies from the water, and then zapping it and drinking it. The dude does like nine grams of mushrooms at the same time. The His memes are great. Like that, that guy's been, a, he's a force multiplier. Everyone should check that dude out. Hold Andrew, on. or I think it's just like Serrano Fitness. But yeah. All right. You're, Hold on. Four mil two chicken me? milkshake. <clears throat> oh God, bro. I don't know if I. <laughs> I don't know if I can do a chicken milkshake, but Jesus, I respect it though. I mean, I'm definitely into to watch it though. I'll watch someone well, do it. it. So here's the thing. You mentioned like the new proteins and things like that. Another thing I want all the young kids to listen to is like, if you're like, you can totally get enough protein in the day without having to really mm -hmm. rely on a lot of these like drinks and shit. Like if you're not getting vitamins and I know it's different than just having a protein shake, vitamins and minerals from your diet, taking pills isn't going to fix that. You know, I, we tell them you, you, all the, the sleep that you miss that white monster energy drink, it's not going to give you the sleep that you missed that, that rest that you needed. It's going to make you wired mm -hmm. and taste like liquid Skittles and shit, but eat real food. Eat like Rich Piana said, man, before that guy's heart exploded from all the steroids that rest he was peace. doing. Yeah. yeah, rest in peace, big Piana. He, he's in that Malcolm in the Middle bodybuilder scene. I don't know if you noticed that. Is Where, he uh, really? Dad's, yeah, he's in the background no doing bicep shit, curls dude. and shit. Yeah, I no just picked shit. that up the other day. I didn't I know love that, that scene. Dude, he's a funny Thanks, character Mr. too. But we could always be bigger and shinier. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, dude, it, it, it's it's one thing to supplement, you know, what you're doing, mm -hmm. but. Unless you're like a, not unless, I shouldn't gatekeep shit like that. Just spend your money on food. You, if you want to get big, you got to eat big. You got to do the work too. If you want to get small, yeah. it, a lot of this stuff happens at the dinner table. A lot, you know, half the, half the work happens, you know, in the gym too. But a lot of the work, the hard stuff isn't in the gym. It's just portion control or, you know, eating more. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely a big part of it too, especially in just dieting properly and then drinking enough water. But yeah, no, dude, I'm right there with you on, in terms of that because um, I kind of found myself too not taking in appropriate dogs are wrestling, so I'm gonna have to get them over in a second. But uh, but uh, but yeah, just not taking in appropriate vitamins and stuff like that, where you know lifestyle changes and stuff have occurred, and so you get out of a rhythm or a scheduling, and then all of a sudden you get kind of lax, and then it kind of starts you know trick trickling down, you kind of you know get slack on stuff, mm -hmm. but. Uh, but yeah, dude, man, you're, and you're totally right. It's the same thing. It's like, you know, you can take all that stuff in, but, you know, taking it in a little bit naturally, like nat natural source is just, there's something about it, you know, it just doesn't, I feel like you're more likely to actually, you know, continue on that path versus, you know, forcing yourself to take something in. Dude, you can say whatever you want. So, dude, some of those fucking protein shakes are fucking disgusting. But uh, 
dude, I, dude, even I remember when I was like really hardcore dieting, I think the, what's, what's, what's your calorie intake right now? Just out of curiosity, like on average, Ooh, dude, uh, uh, around 1700 right now, Holy give or take. Shit. Damn. Yeah. You're getting down I'm, in the gritty though. That's nice. I get about in the morning. I take with me to work, uh, roughly like sixteen slices of like this salami that I like. Yeah. A couple slices of cheese, uh, pickles, olives, and I I have that all written out with the what the calories are. Mm-hmm. I get home around two three p.m. Haven't eaten since that you know eight or nine, and then I'll I'll have a steak. I have maybe two, sometimes more. Uh, a pound or two of ground beef. Mm-hmm. Uh, I seasoned it up here and there. I, I had some stuff, but j- I just eat enough to be satiated and hey. full of that stuff, and I feel great. And yes. uh, after that, like, I, I, dude, half the time I'm not yeah. lifting because I feel kind of sleepy and tired, and yeah. that's a, it's a give and take. Like, in order, to, it's a hard cut. I've been doing this for like 30, 40 days straight. Yeah, that's the hard um, it's part. It's fun, though. Yeah. But yeah. so the, the worst part of like on those cuts and stuff like that is is literally just literally feeling like you just. You're just being sapped of energy, like a vamp, like, you know, energy vampire, just because your body's, you know, in shock therapy and you're burning calories naturally and you're at a, you're a, at a loss. So your body's burning, you know, excess remaining amount of stuff that you have available versus, you know, prior when you're on a, you know, a bulk and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, dude, that, that stuff is so killer. You can, you feel your fucking muscles cannibalizing on themselves as you're starting to lose weight and stuff and you start getting leaner and stuff. And man, well, as long as you get those protein goals, hopefully yeah. that doesn't happen. Yeah. I mean, like I think to a certain extent, I can't remember. It's like a certain percent of like body fat where you start actually starting to see that. But but still, you know, it's still it's still pretty cool though. It's it's always fun. Yeah, but to say I think the lowest I got calorie intake I think was like fourteen hundred for a day. Wow. And then when I was on fourteen, I was like the very bottom. It was like for three or four weeks, and I was eating just nothing but chicken, brown like a cup like a half a maybe one cup of brown rice and tilapia. And that was like a lot of my diet pretty much the entire time. And then anything filler Gross. was just something with like a quest bar as a sense of like, like just having the fiber or something like that just to feel full and stuff without being hungry. And then like peanut butter would be like my cheat thing if I was like still starving. Just so like I could just have something just to like, you know, feel a little bit fuller. But yeah, dude, dude, it was fucking gross. Tilapia, dude, I'm so, I, I can't, I don't think I can legitimately can't think I can eat tilapia anymore because it just, just the thought of it just grosses me out because I was just eating it. Dude, I was just eating it however possible just to get it down, but it was fucking so gross, dude. It was nasty. <laughs> like water, watery chicken. Gross. Yeah. I mean, like water, yeah, watery, slippery chicken. That's kind of like how to describe and then, it. Dude, put it, then put it in a blender and chug it down. <sighs> oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. But yeah, I would just, dude, I would, um, you know, I'll never, I'll just like, I would mix the protein, like, with just straight up water and stuff like that and just drink it and slug it down. And like, even if it was like kind of chunky, I was just like, fuck it, doesn't matter. Same thing, but dude, you rip some nasty fucking farts like that though. If you're not drinking enough water, dude, that's fucking. <laughs> dead. Have, I, have I told you that story before? Have I told you this story? We'll, we'll save it for the next one. Okay. We got to go save here. Enough. Yeah, dogs are fighting. Yeah, you, can, can you hear that? Can you hear them tussing around? Because my, nah, I just want to make a joke. Yeah, what's that? They, I mean, they they are literally racing back and forth, barrel racing, and they probably shouldn't because you guys probably just ate, right? Yeah. The goodest of boys. Yeah, the goodest of boys. Yeah. So I have the new I don't even know if you know that. I have a have a third dog now. So I have my my lab, my older lab that I've had for a while, and my shepherd, and then I have a this new little uh rum uh rum um rambunctious uh Malinois. So but he's he's actually really good though. He's not as as fucking crazy as a lot of Malinois are, but you know, end of the day I'm sitting here and they're like, What the what's going on? Oh, might as well just fucking toss some shit around, you know, pick this up and make a fucking scene, you know, be a little dramatic. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but yeah, man, we'll wrap it up. We'll, um, we'll pick it up and do another one. I would love, I would love to do it again and do another one a little more, a little more focused and, and, you know, streamlined and maybe we can do some else because we had some cool plans before. Um, I had to go, I had to go back and listen to clips of that other podcast. <laughs> All right, hey, hey, <laughs> Jesus, sorry, the fucking the one where we're both just inebriated. Oh yeah, that was pretty much it. But I was still there were still some highlights, so I'm gonna actually go look. I still have it. I'm going to listen to it and like find some of the highlights of it or something. It'd be pretty funny. But yeah, we'll have to do it. And then we have to uh, catch back up and play some games. But, but yeah, man, thank you again. So, so, thank you again so much. Can for, we get some? Can I get some parting remarks in before we go? Oh, of course, absolutely. Young man, it is it is your duty to seek truth. And it's the duty of old men like Max and I to speak truth. And it's everyone's duty to defend it. Go touch grass. Go drink some water. Call your friends. Buy more patches. There you go. I love all of you. Wow. 
that dude that was that was beautiful dude put that on my fucking tombstone baby i'm about to get that fucking tattoo dog that's fucking awesome <laughs> i didn't come up with it <laughs> well, I'm gonna, just fucking cool i'm just gonna say you did though i'm gonna say you did the whole thing but yeah that's oh thank you again so much and then uh, first of course thank you for having me oh absolutely dude uh always always an honor always an honor um where can they find you at on on instagram if they don't already at privateer group at dirt nap derek um, if yes, you want sir. the, if you want to bug me on the, the public facing private one, hit me up, there yell at go. me. There Let's you go. go. And then uh website is, uh, privateer dash group.com. There you go. Pack group, whatever. It's the, you know, the minus symbol, that yeah. guy. Yeah. I'm going to say in, and regardless, regardless, even if you are too autistic or too scatterbrain ADHD, whatever you want to call it, like myself, I'll have it linked for you in the description. So that way you have a direct source, right? To get that main line hitter so you can get some of his stuff and there's no excuse sign up for notifications subscribe to his stuff so that way you can snag some of that cool copium stuff copium i don't think that's a real word that vibes but <laughs> we're going to use it so that cool co- copium copium stuff that hitter so i made it up but yeah so again thank you so much buddy uh and hopefully play some Thanks, buddy oh, dude that's fucking weird i don't know why i said that because I'm looking at your fucking gothic King Cobra on my my monitor screen, so like I looked at that. Oh and, yeah, so everybody I need to watch don't, it. don't forget and go subscribe watch that to shit. Goth- it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and subscribe to Gothic King Cobra. <laughs> Shout out new new sponsor of the, the podcast, Gothic King Cobra. There you go. All right, dude. Hey, we'll talk to you later. Thanks Thank so much you. for having me on. Man. Absolutely, likewise.